Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on three middle-aged men from Concordia, Ontario, Canada. They return to the Shed Legends after episode 365 with our Concordia Canucks Shed Boost. <laughs> Since episode 365, just a few short weeks ago, they have become WOAA champions won every single playoff game in their way, on route to the OMHA championship, watching a group of young men from our hometown become championship hockey players on and off the ice, and finding a way to pull her out one more time in the championship, watching our puppies earn it in a 5-4 nail biter to take home the Red Hats to Concord in Ontario, Canada. Welcome back to the shed, Jared Adams, Jason Holt, and Big Daddy Humper, Tom Humphrey is not here yet. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, not yet. No lacrosse practice, folks. So you get you finish one sport and you dive right into the next one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so we did it, guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, crazy. It crazy is crazy week. <laughs> it's been a. Um, have you guys been effective at work this week? Well, I guess uh, hopefully my boss isn't listening. Uh, I wouldn't say I was at uh, my peak performance, but uh, mm -hmm. it was we're still like, getting her done. We're still getting her done just in case he is listening. Yeah, well, exactly. And you got to be gamers, right? Um, you always got to show up and do your job, even if you're tired. <laughs> and by the way, folks, um, the Shed is sponsored by Grey Matter from Concord, Ontario, Canada. And to all the other teams in Ontario, checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh cheers, fellas. Winning is fun. <laughs> so, Jared, um, what's neat is that we won. What also is neat as a coach and a father is your son scored two goals in the final game and won MVP. He sure did. Yeah, that was hard, pretty uh, hard to write storybooks good. like this, eh? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, he did. That was a big game, and uh, he was uh, he was going pretty hard. Both of them were typical garbage goals that you get in a championship game, but hey, that's that's what it takes. Well, and uh, I was I was saying to the forwards, the goals are around the net. It's like you got to be around the net, and that is where he got his goals. That's what when it comes down to those games, that's usually what happens, right? You get those dirty shots on net that squeak by, and there's nerves on both teams, and you know, you squeeze that one in, and then the momentum starts to shift your way, and that's, that's definitely what happened. So, Holt, that was quite a hockey game, huh? The final game to win the Red Hats? <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. I thought when she, it started out there, we actually were oh, – we had him hemmed in pretty good at the start, and we were all over him, in my opinion. And then and uh, in control, up to nothing? I was going to say, yeah, we were in pretty good control. We were getting lots of chances. We were controlling the play in their end. And then... Uh, Seemed like we were going to smash them at that point, didn't it? Yeah, I thought this should be, if we can just keep rolling like this, things should uh, work out in our favor. Mm -hmm. But uh, once again, the hockey gods had some different plans and uh, decided to make it a little more exciting for the fans and the parents and anybody else who may have been watching, so... Um, yeah, it was tough on the old ticker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, I guess we we're up to nothing, and then uh, you know they got they got a lucky one. They yep. the one one greased through a lucky one. Then all of a sudden it was two one, and they hadn't had much going on at that point. And I thought, well, whatever. Like they mm -hmm. haven't been bringing much yet, and it's just two one. Like we're fine. And then I think it was the power play goal, right? The wraparound makes it 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're in a hockey game again. And I'm like, what just happened? We were up 2 nothing, and now, like, we're tied <laughs> in the championship game? What the hell is going on? <laughs> so, anywho, then we score again. 3-2, back in control, right? <laughs> right, Jared? Then what happened? Oh, they tied her up. They tied her up and kept, kept coming out this way. I mean, in between there, like, we had so many chances. You know, so many pucks were just floating across the goal line or missing the net or, you know, crashing the goal line, just couldn't squeak her through. 
And then they would come back down and just grease the lucky one in on us. Like, it's just one of oh, those games. Like, so, old Meiji championships are now tournaments, right? Not series. And um, what was going through my head is like, this is a one game thing. And it's like, we are dominating play and they're winning in the third period. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> they're up four, three right now. Like, and then the game just kept happening. Time kept ticking away. And I was like, well, this huh? can't be happening. <laughs> And then um, we keep a pucking at the blue line. I think it was Colby and just throws it towards the net. And there's old Daltz, just like he was all season around the net being crafty. And he tips it and then finds the rebound and somehow greases that one in. And then all of a sudden we're tied again. Hey, eh? that Daltz can score some big goals. Can he? <laughs> that was a beautiful play too. He just like, Colby directed it in just to open ice. And Dalton just put it on that with one hand, and then just drove her in. Like it was a, it was like a hot, it was a good hockey play. Well, it's uh, those smart guys that like the pucks coming up the wall, and all those defense are like watching the puck come up the wall, and Daltz hides behind them, right? And then Colby throws it to the net to him, and you know it takes a smart winger seeing that play that like it might get turned over, and I'm gonna hide behind these D right by the net and uh, score another big goal. <laughs> Yeah, he scored a few. Um, that was quite the tournament, but we'll stick with this game. Um, so then it's 4-4 with six and a half minutes left. No, I th- I think there was only like four minutes left. Bolt, I remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there six minutes left? You can go to video review. It's six and a half. <laughs> All right. I'll have to look at the live barn. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it seemed like there was not much time left. Well, and then, um, it, yeah, it wasn't long after, three minutes later which I think is neat for me um, is that we switched him from a defenseman to a center and our captain, Sam Humphrey, who has scored huge goals for us all season two. Um, the captain of your team, the kid that trusted us to switch him to forward when he'd played defense his whole life. And then to see the season he has, and then see him score the championship winning goal is like jeepers. And then your dad's the other coach, big daddy Humphrey. That's not here yet. And his son, the captain of the team, scores the championship winning goal. That's got to be neat for everybody, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That was a big one. That, uh, that one felt good. And so I've told this story to you guys, but not on here. <laughs> the dads kept telling me about all these dad hugs in the crowd and how rowdy it was getting when we were scoring and how much um, man love there was up there. And then, obviously, our the, the moms, um, the wives, um, were all in uh, tight orange pants. What are they called? Leggings? Is that what they call them? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were tight, tight. folks, yeah, and they bright were orange, and it takes yeah. everybody to win. Everybody's got to get involved. And the moms brought their A game, too. And um, when we scored that goal, you know, because I had heard, I just, like, briefly looked up in the crowd to see what was going on up there. Holy moly, it was a circus. The mums up with their tight orange pants, screaming and waving and yelling at the cowbells. And then the dads were just in one huge melee in the back, all hugging and high fiving. It was a wild seed. <laughs> <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. But um, I always say it takes everyone to win. And when I f- had a really good feeling about the game, was when I looked up in the crowd before. And all of our moms were sitting as tight as a group can get, all right together, like one hockey family. And then all the dads were like arm in arm behind them. And like it was all one big hockey family. And then I looked at the other side and all their parents were scattered around the crowd. And I was like, ha, we got you. (laughs) I don't know if you guys saw that too. Yeah, Yeah, the guy that had that big air horn, maybe that's why he was (laughs) blasting that thing. I don't know if you heard that. Thing. Well, I never, I don't tell you guys what's all going through my head while we're out there, but uh, it, that's what I was thinking when I saw just the uh, hockey families up in the crowd. I'm like, it takes everybody to win. And we had everybody on board this weekend. Didn't we like Holt at the hotel? Um, there was a time we were sitting at the stairs at the end of the hallway and I saw siblings playing with babies. I saw all the parents getting along 
mini hockey at the far end. And I'm like, wow, this is really hockey this weekend. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody sure came together. That's for sure. That was, uh, she was a co complete team effort. That's for sure. That's on ice, off ice, parents, brothers, sisters, mothers, grandpas, everybody, grandmas. Well, it it does take everyone to win, right? Like I always say that. And it's like, I, I do say, and all the boys can hear this, that the reason we won is we had a team of guys that could all play. We have a team of hockey guys. And uh, I, one of the dads said to me at the hotel when we were celebrating, he said, you know, watched a lot of minor hockey, but I've never seen a team win it all without shortening the bench. And I thought, well, that is pretty neat. And kudos to you fellows. Cause it's like, well, who are you not going to play? All of them can go, you know? Absolutely. And any night, different game, and any period, it was a different guy going. So, I mean, it was like we just kept them rolling. And that was our secret weapon, I think, is when it, you know, push comes to shove, when other teams were burnt out, we just kept the three lines pumping out there. And, you know, everybody was competing, and nobody could stand a chance with us. Like, you know, we did it all year, but this tournament, especially, like, we battled and we won some games that, you know, Normally, a team probably wouldn't pull off, but we did it. And it was just because we were, everybody was rolling at, you know, on full cylinders. And it, 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 it took everyone. And then, you know, I, as a, as a guy that played pro, um, I, there were times in my career where the moment was too much for me and I was too nervous and I couldn't play. And, um, it was one time was, um, I was playing for Western Michigan and Philadelphia was thinking of signing me and we play at university of Michigan. And my agent tells me Ron Hextall, the GM is coming to watch. And I could see him on the other side of the arena. Like when I went out there, I could see him standing there with his clipboard and like watching and I could not handle it. I couldn't think of anything else. I, j I wanted it so bad that like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even perform at all. And uh, it was the worst game I've ever played. And Philadelphia was no longer interested. <laughs> Their scouts all said good things. And then when I found out that the big dog came to watch, couldn't do her no more. <laughs> and that ship sailed. Um, but what was neat for me was the start of the tournament. I would say my pregame speech was too much when everybody already had nerves. And I got right wound up because I was letting her all out with the passion. And it was probably way too much for the time. But we did have a couple fellows that, like, I thought went out and wanted it so bad. And I could see myself back that day. And I was like, oh, they want it so bad that, like, they're having a hard time right now. And to see those guys get comfortable in the big moment and every game find their game to the point where when we were in the games that really mattered, they were they were as good as they ever were. at the start of the part of the message here that you know some of the guys we relied on you know were those people that were just finding their way to the first game or two but other people stepped up and that's the beauty of it you know like that's the a team. team we had it was you know one guy was down somebody else would step up and pull a big game out so. it was it really <laughs> like I don't think people even understand until we explain it to them like this season and like hold maybe you can explain um like how many times this team came back in the third period and i it was depth but it was also like the net like we are the the will like they would not accept losing and they they like they believed like deep down they believed that they were going to win the games no matter what the circumstance right <laughs> No, absolutely. Like <clears throat> depth, as you said, like the depth we had on this team, like if somebody wasn't necessarily playing at their full potential that game, there was <clears throat> five or eight other guys on the bench that were going to be. So even if you had a couple, like we just had the depth, like you just, as you said, you rolled lines. What, and it, and I, I always say every, it takes everybody to win. And it's like when you, your best players aren't the best players that night, you still need to have a chance to win. And what, what was our, we lost one regular season game this year and we won every single game in the playoffs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's almost funny when you say it out loud. 
few of them for a little for the fate weren't for the faint at heart. The, but uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll get talking about those. I'm sure as we could progress through the show here. Well, what what do you what do we do now? Do you want to talk about like the tournament and each game and how each game went, or where are we where are we yeah. going? Yeah, let's do that. Totally sure. So we get there and. Uh, we're playing the team that beat us in an exhibition game, three nothing. I thought we laid a huge egg that night. I thought it was a, one of our worst games of the year, um, and we had juggled lines. We had tinkered with things, and then uh, Jared, it was your idea after that game when we were talking and like we were, we had been struggling, and you said, "Well, when did we play our best hockey this year?" And uh, we were like, "The Windsor tournament," and I was like, "What were the lines?" And then we said, "These were the lines." And we said, let's go back to that tomorrow when we play Walkerton. We need to get back to what's made us best. And we did it. And we never lost another game the rest of the year, eh? <laughs> Good idea, Jared. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. well, sometimes you got to go to what works. <laughs> right? That makes you know, sense. That, that winter tournament, you know, we, yeah. we were rolling. We played real good at the hockey night, that tournament by the end of it, so... Yeah, I'm a believer that you have to kind of tinker with the lines as the season goes. And then eventually you're like, you got to just stick with what, you know, the best option is that you have and let the boys build some chemistry. Well, I totally agree. You have to tinker because you don't know what the best option is. And then there comes a point in the season, which it was that point in the season where it was like, okay, this is what made us best. And when we talk about those three lines, it's like, you have Sam's line, the captain, and you got Damien, the playmaker, and Hayden that gets in front of the net and scores the greasy goals. And it's like all three of those guys work together. And um, Sam could carry the mail up the middle and sometimes break away and just go top titties. <laughs> um, and then, uh, then you have Colby and Brady who have played together lots in their life. And um, Daltz, who's just a goal scorer and is clever around the net. And Brady's the playmaker that is the smallest guy in the league and plays like the biggest guy. And then I guess Colby doesn't like to back down for much either. Um, and then you have the Savage line. And it's like Savage is a savage. And he tries harder than anybody anywhere. And I would love that when I tell him I needed Savage mode, he'd look at me in the eye. And he just like, I got this coach and he would go out there and muck it up so hard that he would just will it in. And uh, Burton, the most improved player in the world, um, just giving her everywhere. And then Mr. McGawk, who also could be the most improved player in the world. Um, it, it is crazy, those lines and how they just fit, right? They, every line, you know what I mean? Any given night would be the best line, would be our top line. And we didn't know there what, was no know, first, second, or third no line. Second, They're all the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, they all came came to play and some nights some were slightly better than others, but they the lines were clicking, that's for sure. And they, you know, the beauty thing that I thought was cool all season, especially in this tournament, is we were getting goals from everybody. Like in the we won a game six three and get six different goal scorers then the next game we won six two and we had five different goal scorers like you know it's pretty impressive that everybody's contributing like that and when you talk about minor hockey i would say that's uncommon definitely yeah yeah, yeah. usually you got one or two that are cherry all right it was uh a magical year there is uh no doubt and you know what's a fun fact for everybody is holt you came on episode 219 right so it was uh, 219. Right. Yeah. And uh, what's interesting is like when you think of how everything worked out and I have a podcast and we have a platform where we can tell these stories and uh, let everybody know how awesome our boys are at hockey is you wired the shed. We have electricity out here because of you, right? Yeah. And it's still working. That's even another Thing. There's a bit of a flicker. <laughs> that might be a miracle. No. <laughs> it's, it's all to code, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's all code. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. No, no need to go and do any inspections there. So he wired the shed and then named it, right? You you are you came up with the name Two Ales and Hockey Tales, and we just won the All Ontario Championship together. What a world, eh? <laughs> I don't know how I had a little epiphany that night, but it came to me. Ah, <laughs> oh, there were so many things that weekend that I was like. 
And then the way the boys kept pulled it out, I'm like, there's another sign that this is happening. There's another sign that this is happening. And then we, I told, I only told Jared about this because sometimes I just let things happen in my head and think that they're real until they are. <laughs> I went, I, cause every game, <clears throat> cause they wouldn't put the nets on, right? Yep. I go on the ice to put the net on. So our team's net would be on and the other teams wouldn't because <laughs> I'm always playing hockey. <laughs> um, but I went to put the net on for the championship game and, uh, oh shoot, I left it in the truck. The, there was an OMHA championship 2024 puck on top of the net, just one. And I was like, hmm, why is that there? <laughs> so I put it in my pocket and then I kept it. <laughs> And I thought, huh, another sign that we're going to win this thing, you know? Hockey gods. Yep. They were on our side that day. And uh, I always say winning gets people talking. How many uh, messages have you fellas gotten? How many people have been talking to you about us winning? <laughs> I would say like 30 plus on the daily one and then even you know, tons of emails at work and lots of people talking about it, that's for sure. Yeah. It's been and, a while since King Curtis had an Ontario, so and uh um, I think what's cool about it all is um small world stuff is the last team that won all Ontario in U thirteen was Garrett McFadden and Ethan Skinner, shed guys. Um and Ethan came and talked to our team right before the big tourney. Holt, you take this one. Yeah, yeah. I know he came up the night of our final practice on the Wednesday night. We were doing our final preparation, and Ethan stopped by and uh, the game went in and gave the boys a little pep talk and told about some of his experiences and wished us well. And obviously, maybe some of that rubbed off or. Well, and I just think good karma is good karma. Yeah. And like, that's what all this stuff lining up and um, someone said something to me the other day. It's like, oh, it's just shed luck. And I'm like, hmm, I have been getting pretty lucky with all this. It's like the coaches I have, the players I have. Um, it's just all just all making sense too much, you know. <laughs> um, I forget where I was going with that, though. Anywho, I had a story and I forget it now. What are you going to do? So we, the first game we play Lampton Shores, we got off track again. Eh? I know where we were. We were talking about the first game, <laughs> not winning again. We won it all though, folks, in case you didn't know. Um, game one, we play Lampton Shores and we had laid an egg. Then we got sidetracked about lines and stuff. We play them the first game. They only have 11 players, right? And it's like, we're rolling in with three lines and it's like, you want to keep up with us for three periods? Um, and they did, they played a very good game. They had very good players and they were in the same hotel as us, weren't they? <laughs> I was going to bring that up. If you didn't bring that fact up, that, that was the first person I ran into when I walked into the hotel. Well, the shore predator. And you know how I can get right. I get a bit, I like my one eye stops working right. When I get a little competitive and I get a little bit wound and I drive all the way to Kingston thinking about what's about to happen and I'm right wound. I park my truck and the truck beside me has the predators logo on it. The team we're playing the next day. And I was like, huh? And I, you know, I was ready to go right away. <laughs> so should we tell any stories about how I tried to hockey the night before the game? <laughs> no, it's up to you. Well, okay. I'll tell yeah. it because I think it's funny. Because we won. We beat them. Um, went swimming with my daughter. And um, there was three boys in the hot tub. And my daughter wanted to go in the hot tub. And she was. I was like, well, let's go get in the hot tub with them. And then I got in with them and I got ch chatting. I was like, oh, what position are you? What, what number are you? <laughs> where do you play? And then he's like, and then eventually they're like, so where are you from? And I'm like, oh, concurred. <laughs> And they're like, oh, we play you tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, I'm the coach. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got out of the hot tub. <laughs> so then they got in the pool. And then Zoe says, why don't we take their pool now? <laughs> and I was like, Zoe, 
you're quite competitive. <laughs> She's like, let's get in the pool. They'll get out. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we got in the pool and those three boys got out. <laughs> I think they're intimidated by me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was interesting staying in the same hotel as the other team right before you play them in game one of the Ontarios, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. At least they didn't know. put us on the same floor. I was just asking about hockey and how they played and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they just didn't know who they were talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, so that game, we were down one nothing in the third period, weren't we? Yep. Yeah. Yes, we were. Um, <laughs> it was first two juniors that got played down by the fire. It was very What? On the boys side. You, I couldn't hear you good there. What? Oh, they said those first two periods definitely weren't our finest. Oh. There was definitely, there were some nerves. There were some <laughs> nerves all around. And, uh, you know, it was kind of reminded me of that game when we were in Lamp Shores. Mm -hmm. thinking, uh oh, here we go again. Well, what? for for what I was thinking, it was like we've played five periods against this team and we have not scored one goal. Yeah. Right? Was it not Hayden that scored the first one to get us going that game too? It was, yeah, it was. Yep. And then yeah. and then Savage, Savage holding the, the winner with two and a half minutes left, and it's like they did it. Like they did it again. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Wild <laughs> stuff. We do got to give Knox some credit for that game, though. He was oh. – uh, Knox held us in that one. Did he ever, man, because we were yeah. brutal the first two periods. Yeah, he made some big saves. Huge, huge, and he's a gamer. <laughs> Every time it's it's the game's on the line, man. He's I've seen it. I've coached him two years, and both years I've gone to all Ontario championships, and we won it this year. And I always say goaltending wins championships, right? What it meant for us, I agree. Like he, he, when there was a big game, he was always ready to go, and he kept us in a lot of games this year. Oh, that walk, that and there's series is another, you know, highlight by him. He was picking pucks out left, right, and center. Well, yeah, that's a whole nother story we've got to get into. Hey, we're yeah. just been talking about all Ontario's man. Um, I would say after all the teams we played, I always, I would always say that when our boys play their best, it doesn't matter who we play. And I still believe that. And that's why we are the champions. But um, when we gave our best game and the other team gave their best game, I still believe Walkerton is the second best team in Ontario. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They were good. Uh, they, they had good kids. Um, you know, even after they lost how devastating it was, um, like they were good kids. They came and shook our hands and wished us luck. And um, I was impressed by their coaching staff too. Um, I, I thought they, they had a great year, you know, but well, they were sending us texts all weekend, wishing us luck and congratulating us. So yeah, they were definitely yeah. lots of sportsmanship on that team. Yeah. And uh, I, I like competing with people like that and the port coaches, the, um, they were the same way. They even came to watch us play after, right? And that was after we had eliminated them. They came to watch us play, and that's neat for me, I thought. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so, game two. All right, so, we beat the team that's in the same hotel as us, game one, and there's only one game that day. So, they're sour because winning's the opposite of losing. <laughs> and um, we all go back to the same hotel, and the night before – their parents had taken the lobby, right? And we had been in the restaurant area and they said, tomorrow can't be in the restaurant area, only in the lobby. And I'm like, okay, well, got the hot tub in the pool. It's like, well, I bet you they're not going to come to the lobby after they just lost. <laughs> and our parents took the lobby, didn't they? <laughs> Win winning's fun. I'm not that competitive, right? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Um, so we won, um, the first day and then we played Port Colburn, who I thought was a very good team. Actually, um, they gave us a great game and it was two, two at the end of the third period. Right. And a win and a tie is not doing much going into the third game of the round Robin. Right. No, 
We did that one, and we locked ourselves into the tennis, which we need to go into it. So. You sound really <laughs> quiet again. No, really. Yeah, you, I think you just got to speak up. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then you get a little closer to the screen. Anywho, um, what'd you say? I said we win that one. We locked ourselves into the semifinals, which we knew going into it. So, um, yeah, tie definitely wasn't good enough. But we, no. were, we were definitely tied in the third period. And um, 33 seconds left in the game. Yep, Mr. Okay. Holt, it's your boy this time from the blue line. See, Jared, I do remember every play. Um, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it and throws it to the net. And crafty old Daltz is down by the net again and tips it in to win it with 33 seconds left. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did you guys ever feel like we were like filming Mighty Ducks 4 and nobody <laughs> told us? <laughs> Seriously, like all these games and how they went and how these kids pulled it out. It was like <clears throat> every game was like, man, you can make a movie about this. <laughs> So yeah, lots of late, late third period wins. Yes, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> and Dalt scores with 33 seconds left. We win the game, and then that team's eliminated. They were tied with 33 seconds left. And I always told the boys, it's like ending people's seasons is fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the uh, fun, fun fact about that game when we walked into the dressing room, you know, you and I both looked at each other and we're like, what is going on? Like, it. We looked like we walked into a funeral. Kids were all in there, you know, long faces and like almost looked like we'd lost. Meanwhile, you know, we pulled a big win and locked ourselves into the semis of the All Ontarios. Yeah. But yeah. that's, but that was our team. The boys were not impressed with their performance. So. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was uh, as coaches, like we, yeah, we were we just won a game with 33 seconds left, found a way, another miracle, which we had not played as good as we can. Guys had struggled. Um, some guys stepped up. Some guys were ha- still having nerves because of the big moment and probably their parents, everybody around town going, oh, the Ontario's, oh, the Ontario's, oh, Kingston, 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 all Ontario's, oh, it's such a big deal. And then they get there and like they haven't played in those moments yet where you're dealing with all that pressure and i like i would try and tell them it's like every time you do it you get more used to it it's like going up to the next level going up to the next league it's like the first couple games you're all nervous but then once you've done it you're like oh that's like the same as every other where you just play hockey <laughs> you know anywho um what game are we on now what are we talking about we just wrapped up game two. Game two. Game three is next. Yep. Game yes. three. And it's the battle of the Canucks versus the Canucks. And um, both of us are 2-0. and oh, And it's to play f- to finish first and play second in the other group or whatever. And um, also because you're going to see maybe see them again Sunday. And w- the boys who had had nerves, um, everybody – we had found a way to win the first two games, but we were, we had not been at our best. There's no doubt about that, but we were two and zero. And then the third game, we went out there and we, we had ourselves a hockey match. Didn't we? Yeah. The boys came out ready to play that one. Oh yeah. Was that six, three or six, two, six, three. But <laughs> on the other side of things is, um, is six, three, but it was tied three, three in the third. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had handled them in the first and then we took a whole bunch of penalties like we had used to do in, earlier in the year where, you know, we were the top ranked <laughs> penalty minute leaders in Ontario and the winners. <laughs> um, but anywho, uh, we took a lot of penalties and we went into the third three, three in like the game for first place. And, um, I would say like the kids that do everything right and play hockey the right way and just give her for the team and do whatever old rooster there scores a huge goal and in hockey there's a whole bunch of different roles and everybody has to do their job and his job was a shutdown guy pk guy he did whatever it took and um he scores the goal to give us the lead and i i went as soon as he put that in and seeing him celebrating how happy he was i was like that's that's hockey hockey gods eh, holt <laughs> yeah exactly 
What a fella. Um, Rooster Ooh. gave her this year, didn't he? No, oh, yeah, Rooster did. I do want to give one shout out to the Clearview Canucks who were playing. Their coaches were, they did like their outfits. I don't know if you guys remember their outfits. How could I forget? No, they, they, I, that's, when they walked in, I thought this team knows how to hockey. Those green jackets with the white, was it white leather sleeves? Well, and it was yeah. like the old school jacket like yeah. you'd have in the 90s, right? But then the facial hair. The facial hair to go with it. Like the one guy looked like he was off the trailer park, boys. Like they were. Like, Fantastic mullets. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. <clears throat> well, and like we'd have to get into ours then while we're on the topic as well. They walk in knowing how to hockey with yeah. with their fantastic facial hair. But, um, I mean, I had a blonde mullet and a good beard. And um, all of the fellows on our team, mainly, most of them, had blonde mullets, right? <laughs> yep. No, it was a... Uh, Got was... awfully hockey in Concord, Ontario, yep. Canada lately, hasn't it? <laughs> Uh, blonde mullets are fun, but they told us right in episode 365, right, Jared, that they were going to do that when we went to Ontario's and we sure did go to Ontario's. Then we won it. Right. <laughs> they went out and did it. And they looked short. But yeah, the Clearview Canucks, uh, they, the, those coaches were good dudes too. Uh, very nice guys. And I always say the, like the nice, good people in hockey that treat people right. Um, you know, their teams are successful and those coaches were great. Even after they lose a heartbreaker, man, they congratulated us. They meant it. Um, I thought they were really good dudes. Yep. Agreed. Then there were some other teams this season, right? Where the coaches would get right heated and yeah. screaming at everybody and blaming everybody. And you're like, <laughs> holy moly. <laughs> yep. Jerry, do you know probably who have a couple teams I'm talking about, maybe? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, you definitely respect the team. The coaches are coaching right, you know, and they're like mm-hmm. not, not screaming and yelling and you know taking the, that approach at the game. They're, they're you know trying to do the right thing. And that Clearview team was. They, I really like their team. Even watching them warm up and go on the ice, like you know they they had some good structure. It almost reminded of, of me of us, but you know they had some they had some good structure. I thought. Um, well, they're a good team and shout out to number eight, buddy, whoever you are. Um, I thought you were a clever little, little player. Um, not like the fastest, biggest, strongest guy, but like had a head for the game and he was making plays all over the ice. He scored big goals, both games they played us. Um, and I told him when we were shaking hands, I'm like, man, I know this sucks, but like, you're a player stick with it, you know? Cause he, he was good. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he was good. He was real crafty and tough for our D to handle when he was in front of the net with the puck. Yeah, and yeah, he, you could tell he was a gamer. He was scoring big goals in the big moments of a big game, and you know, it just it's tough when you you go up against the concurrent Canucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy, not that. Probably won't hear this, <laughs> right? Um, anywho, um, what else do I got? So we took that one. Yep. And then moved on to the semis on Sunday morning. Right. And we played the Highland Storm. And someone asked me where they're from, and I didn't know how to answer them. Do you know? Halliburton. Halliburton. Yeah. Halliburton. So um, we played well that game again. That was, uh, two games in a row, we played very well, right? Pretty well spanked them. It was, what, 6-2? That was a 6-2 game then. Yeah. 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 And um, I think someone said on here once, like, spanking people is way more fun than getting spanked. And that was fun, right? <laughs> oh, it was nice to have a game that it wasn't uh, the... The stress. The stress of the last minute. And are we is this are we going to be able to do this again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like, finally had one where we really did her. <laughs> yeah, like, we could actually, yeah. The last minute we got... And then we get off the ice and... I had never seen the other team play Ennis more than finished first in the other group, but we win ours pretty well there and we get off the ice and I hear the other games in overtime, right? Yep. The other semi. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the other Canucks do pull her out probably from the fantastic facial hair um, (laughs) and the great jackets. Um, They do get the overtime winner. Um, So I never did see that Ennis more team play. Um, but then we're playing the same team we've already played, right? Yep. 
Um, so do, Jared, were you nervous at all that the boys would take it for granted because we had uh, controlled play so much the first time we played them? You know, I, I wasn't like we, our kids step up to the occasion and I, you know, I can tell they? that they were going to be ready. So I, I wasn't too, I didn't think we'd take them for granted. I think the boys knew like, you know, this is the finals of the All Ontarios, and it's not going to be easy. You could in the pregame meeting that they they so affectionately had there for the last few games. You know, I, don't, I know they were definitely talking about you know they can't take these guys for granted. They can't be complacent. Um, that was pretty neat for coaches, right? Because um, why well, I, I always I like the song "Let Your Boys Be Country," and it's about like <laughs> letting your boys be boys and. I thought we did that this year. Um, we put together a routine from the start of the year and hockey players like routines and rituals. And we would talk to them 30 minutes before the game. We would go over tactical stuff and then I'd get a bit wound at the end and we'd have this, was, we got a lot of rituals on this team, but um, then they'd go do their warm up, and then they'd come back in. We'd fist bump all of them. They'd get ready way after all these other teams remember all these teams would be dressed way before the game and i'd be like there's no way we can lose this team their kids are dressed 20 minutes before the game <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh but anywho um yeah the pre-game start like the way it all went we had a routine you do this that uh meeting they go warm up then we would have they would all get ready they tied their own skates they were all ready to go we'd come in right before it's go time and really yell and shout at them, right? Big Daddy Humper's here. Hey, Ken. Hey, Where's Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> Doing good. It's quite, it's quite the name you got there. Yeah. The boys <laughs> using your account for that. Toilet 999. So you got through lacrosse practice, eh? Did everybody like your hair? Yeah. Um, no, I don't know many people there, so I just get a lot of weird looks. <laughs> <laughs> um so jared i i think i asked you you did feel pressure to dye your hair blonde after i had done it and big daddy humper right you had you felt pressure right i know you didn't do it and you got some big fancy job but hey did you feel pressure oh you're talking to me yeah well dye I your hair look at that hair look at his hair look at that flow enough, and you but... didn't go blonde <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was jealous of that flow. Look at it. <laughs> Gotta have product in there, eh, Big Daddy Humper? Yeah, we just need a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, bad. welcome to the party. Um, right on. Sorry right, I'm late. That's okay. We're all busy, <laughs> and I'm glad we're fitting this in when it's time, because I was telling Jared today, I was like, I can't talk to anybody else about hockey right now. I have to talk to my people because all I'm going to do is talk about the concurrent Canucks anyways. <laughs> what a weekend, eh, Big Daddy Humper? Oh, it's huge. I still can't believe it sometimes. And your son scored the game-winning goal, the captain. Yeah, GWG. He wanted and, it. And little Humper on the same team. All the Humpers on one team, eh? Yep. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That's why I couldn't not dye my hair. I had to do it. Had to. <laughs> <laughs> and we did look good with blonde hair, you know? And I still look good going to work with blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So, um, Big Daddy Humper, why don't we get into it? You haven't been here for a while, but um, yeah. I had an idea that, like, um, maybe Big Humper and Little Humper might be on the team this year. And I was skating with O'Reilly in the summer, doing skill stuff and helping him move pucks where he needs them. Um, and uh, he had let Colby come out um, and share the ice with us. And then he even did some drills with them. And I thought, holy moly, this is cool for my son. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I could push the envelope here. Maybe I can invite more kids because the ice is pretty big. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I took your boys to skate with O'Reilly and um and then your son ends up scoring the game winning goal in the all Ontario championships, right? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool to have him skate with O'Reilly. Yeah. Even if they are just watching from the other end, but it's a pretty cool experience. A few selfies to go with it. That's right. And he is a beauty and he actually did 
tell me to say congrats to the boys um because he had skated with a few of them in the summer I sent him the picture and said we did it and he said what a season for you guys tell the boys congrats so fellas if you're listening Ryan O'Reilly says congratulations and he's a big Canucks fan (laughs) you know so hopefully he uh, comes back this summer so I can really push the envelope you know what I mean (laughs) (laughs) Because now I got a whole bunch of new brothers that I got to help out, right? <laughs> See, maybe I'll skate with the whole team. Right? Maybe I should get them to make like a video message. Bring them bring to the summer party. Well, we do need to have a summer party. So who's taking the reins on that one? So what I appreciate about this season, guys, um, was – Everybody had their roles and their rituals and what they did and what their jobs were. And it was like, you guys made it so easy on me. Um, I really only needed to like, remember a marker. And so I, mainly I couldn't even do that. Um, <laughs> like Holt with the scheduling, a big daddy humper with the working out and guy. Cause I know I'm not that guy. Um, and then Jared with all the, everything else, planning everything and um, having practice plans ready. And like, it was so easy, you know? <laughs> takes everybody yeah everybody does their part yeah way, way to go guys that's the last nice thing i'm saying to you tonight okay <laughs> <laughs> um so big daddy humper we we're going through the games we went through them eh? we won it all i think while you were gone yeah. so why, why don't you bring up how we got to the all ontarios we uh why don't we start the start of playoffs and go through that quick and like how playoffs went because um I, well, I don't. I don't know when we was Walker in our first playoff game. No, no, Mid Huron was right. Mid Huron, yeah, seven yeah. one, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I always say like I appreciate coaches that everybody brings what they got, and then you compete, and then everybody can still be friends after and like whatever. Um, Joe Nesbitt, their coach, um, they were the team that gave us the regular season loss. What a mess. Um, but he was the guy that set us up with meeting Jack Nesbitt at the Spitfires game. Right. And it's like, it takes everybody. It's a community. It's a hockey family. And I thought that was neat. He did that. And then after that game, you know, we had text back and forth a bit before, but like, then when we beat them, like he just said, you know, I didn't think it was going to go that way tonight. And it's like, man, you guys looked really good and whatever. And like, it's tough losing like that, but coaches with respect you that's that's good stuff right yeah that was the wild that was the wild third period where they got a bunch of penalties and coaches weren't too happy about it <laughs> things got heated <laughs> things got heated yeah yeah we got the ref on the bad side <laughs> but like when our team when all three lines were going and all 5d were going it's like you saw it for moments like any hockey team but it's like when everybody was going, it's like there's nobody that can play with you guys. Like nobody can play with them. It's just getting them all going at the same time, I guess, right? Because that's, right. yeah. <laughs> that's hockey. <laughs> but it's nice when everybody just steps up and gets her done. Anywho, so mid here on, then we play Walkerton, right? So this is a kind of a cool story, right? <laughs> Big Daddy Humper, why don't you take it? Because your son had a pretty good night that night too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess it was a it was a good battle game. Like, remember the boys just going pretty hard all game long, but couldn't get any luck with the the puck in the other end there. I think it was hemmed, hemmed in our own zone for quite a while, but the, the D really did a fantastic job of keeping us in the game going there. And Knox had quite a few big saves, but. Uh, yeah, we where were we four one. You third? don't remember stuff like me, eh? It's well, three say, nothing with six and a half nothing. minutes left. Three nothing. Yeah, and yeah. I just said to the linesman, <laughs> "That's offside," because it was offside, and they were getting shots on our net. And I'm thinking, if they score, I'm going to lose my mind because that's offside. So I said, "That's offside," and he said, "Don't tell me how to ref, and I won't tell you how to coach." And I said, that's fine, but that's still offside. <laughs> and then the ref comes out of nowhere and says, you, go home. And I'm like, go home. I'm like, because I said it was offside when it was offside. I was like, "You, that's how sensitive you are? I'm like, fine, I'm going to leave. 
And I went out to the lobby and the AE team, the, the kids that wouldn't have made this rep team for Walkerton, the parents are standing out there. And I go stand in the lobby behind the rest of them and just start watching because I'm thinking three nothing playoff game. This is a this is a tough loss. And dad comes up to me and goes, Wow, your team's really come far since uh the start of the season. I remember watching you guys lose seven one to these guys. And I was I, I was like, Okay, okay, like, yeah, we've come really far. Okay, cool. We're losing three nothing and then uh big humper scored one jared takes over control of the bench i'm out of there he starts running big humper big humper <laughs> scores one and he scores two and then colby ties it up with a minute and a half left and then i'm standing there in the lobby the same parents and i just looked over at the guy and he looked over at me and i just kind of smiled up <laughs> and i said i guess i should get kicked out more often <laughs> And then we go to overtime and Big Humper scores his hat trick goal and we win four to three to win the playoff game, eh? Holt, that yeah. was a big win. Oh, it was huge. That was that was probably one of the biggest uh, wins. And that, that might have been the big turning point, or not the turning point. We were still we were on a roll already, but that really might have solidified that hey, this is this is the year we might do this. That this might just be the year. Because we still had a lot of games left, but. Why? You see, when you saw, for me, well, this is my story of it, was I'm in the lobby, and then they, you guys go out and do that while I'm standing there watching. And then they came off that hallway in Walkerton on the far side. And then, like, I came out after they did it, and we had, like, a big group hug. And I was like, this is, like, magical stuff like when minor hockey is expensive but like when you have those moments man it's priceless <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there, was, there was six minutes and 30 seconds left when you got kicked out and then we scored we're three down goals three, in three nothing. <laughs> yeah three goals in three minutes like we didn't even cut or keep that one right down to the wire you didn't even pull the goalie no no no, Holt and I a few times. He was like, "All right, we'll get." It was like I think it was three one at the time, and we were like, "All right, we you know we better get knocks out early, kind of mount to come back." And then, oh, there was another one. <laughs> and, well, and, and, then, and then, right, well, maybe you know we'll wait till around the two you know, two minute mark yeah. to get them out then. And oh, there's the tying goal. Like we didn't we didn't really have to do much. We just you know the boys just rallied. It was, it was, this, and it all happened so fast. I, I was only in that lobby for like 10 minutes and you scored four yeah. goals and won the game. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been yeah, kicked out of two minor hockey games and the other one didn't go like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, other time I wasn't, the other time I wasn't mean either, Tom, you were on the bench with me, right? What's that? When I got kicked out in mild May. Mild May. Oh, and the uh, couple yeah. years before that, yeah. the yeah. boys didn't rally that night. <laughs> no. When I left the bench, it looked like their dog had been shot, and they was <laughs> struggled. <laughs> Not that this team. My word, you guys really did her. That game was like when you talk about all these games that happened, and then you look at our final record, and it's like. How was there never a time they didn't pull it out? <laughs> it came almost made me think we should uh, get you kicked off the bench more often after that. <laughs> well, I and I, I, I didn't feel like I was yelling at anybody. <laughs> What's weird for me is I didn't even get a penalty. It's like if you get kicked out of a game, I and I wasn't even mean enough to get a penalty. It's like, so why are you kicking me out? It was like how that worked out. It's like, huh weird how that worked out because they give me a penalty that i'm getting kicked out um we're killing a penalty for two minutes yeah. weird yeah i'll take it though <laughs> it happened so then the next game we go to port elgin and we had just been on the high and then we go out there and just start doing her we're up four one and having a time and then all the boys just decided to shut her down for the third that they had had enough um <laughs> played enough hockey that night and then all of a sudden it was four to four in the third period right oh 
Greased that one out too, though, didn't we? Fell asleep. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. We, yeah, that was the wasn't that the shot from the point that just kind of squeaked in? Wasn't that that winner? No, that was a regular season game. Come on, man. Oh, okay. Mr. McGock oh. scored. Yep. Oh yeah, right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Was that that's the Port Elgin game? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So anywho, then we got to play some other teams, but um, to start off our playoffs, those were the three top teams: Mid Huron. Walkerton and then Port and we had beat all of them and um, two of them in overtime and I was like wow <laughs> way to go guys and then we were in a good spot we won the other games other than a real stinker in Mitchell <laughs> hey Jared that was a tough go again we pulled it off but it wasn't pretty <laughs> the yeah. Monday night in Mitchell and it was just the opposite of pretty we had beat them 10 nothing the time before and um we were in a hockey game that yeah. night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Anywho, so we beat everybody, and um, then it comes down to a series with Walker to Holt. Yes, sir. We uh, finally get to play a series after all of this. So for the Shed folks that listen and um, – that know maybe that I there, there's been chocolate thrown a few places around the world um, from talking in my shed, which is really funny and still makes me laugh. Um, it, on the pod with the boys, I'm like, this this can happen. Like, if you guys win, chocolate will get thrown on the ice. And some of the boys were telling their parents, and the parents were like, I'm not doing that. I'm not throwing chocolate on the ice. And then we get to the final series against Walkerton. Game one, best two or three. First two games are Saturday, Sunday. Play at home, and I say it takes everybody to win, folks. What we were losing in the third period again. (laughs) (laughs) Three to two, I think, right? And then um, we score two enormous goals. Actually, that one ended 3-2, didn't it? It ended 3-2, yeah. Yeah, it was 2-1 in the third. Um, And then... It it was right at the end of the game. I think Hayden might have scored the second one, but Savage scored the game winner. He went goes in Savage mode when I told him to again, which was neat, and scores a game winner. And a team that had had the lead on us in the third period again had just lost. And then all the siblings actually started throwing chocolate on the ice. And when I like. When the Walkerton boys saw the chocolate coming on the ice, they weren't too thrilled they had just lost. And then chocolate started coming down, and our boys were really happy about it. And I thought, that's cool. (laughs) Yeah, and the ref didn't know what to do. He was all confused with everyone was throwing on the ice. They're they're always trying to hold the bench, and there's chocolate coming out. Yeah. Boys were skating over towards their team. and (laughs) Yeah, because they threw it on the ice. Uh, where the Walkerton players were coming off. Yeah, like right <laughs> over all the heads. And players that's going to upset playing. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think. I just think that's playing hockey. I. That's all. It's just playing yeah. the game, you know? <laughs> is that the game Mr. Kurt Weigel refed? It is, yes. Yep, yep so I'm sure he's getting to chuckle about it now. Uh, he wasn't sure what to do with chocolate syrup right on the eyes. <laughs> people around here haven't seen it, but folks, it does happen in Manchester, England. Um after every win, which is neat from talking to people in the shed and I sponsor the captain of their team, but shout out to Ben in Manchester fella out of nowhere. The goodness of his heart sent me a Manchester storm toque hat and boost bars um, from the UK because of the chocolate stuff. And um, that's pretty nice of a guy that I've never met or talked to, to send me that stuff for talking in my shed to my friends. <laughs> You know, that's cool. Anywho, but the chocolate did happen. <laughs> and then um, we went to Walkerton the next game for game two, right? That was another barn burner, wasn't it, Jared? It was. Yep. That was another one that uh, we got up. I think we were up 2 nothing, and uh, rolled into the third. Knew that they weren't going to give up, and they came out and popped an early one in the third period. And then uh, the rest of that period was pretty chaotic. It they was. And, and um, we, were, we were retreating back into our D structure. And 
ice and pucks and Knox made a couple big saves and we just hung on. Uh, we like hung ride. on. We definitely hung on. And I, like I was saying before, is like playing in these huge moments where it's like playing to go to all Ontario's or then getting to all Ontario's. It's like, it takes, it takes doing it to know how to do it. And that these boys got to do all this and experience all this, I think will make them way better players in the future when they come to these big moments, because um, you saw it with guys from the start of the tournament to the end of the tournament that like, they were okay with the spotlight now. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And yeah, they rose to the occasion when they needed to too, which was neat to see. It sure was. <laughs> like and that and, was a savage winner that game as well. Back to back games. Yes. Savage got the winners. And yeah. then game the first game of the round robin. He had three three in a row. And uh that yeah, boy can sure. sure turn her up when it's time. Yes. Bit of a handful. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him had quite the relationship. Uh, Colby said to me the one day. <laughs> Do you remember when you just grabbed a stick and threw it? <laughs> and it was like a drill of practice when he was just, you know, testing me like he always was. And uh, instead of him, like, annoying me while I'm trying to explain the drill, I just grabbed a stick and threw it and then just kept explaining <laughs> the drill. <laughs> Speaking of fun stuff, though, Jared, you were there. The belly flop was fun. And... um you know, it's a thing, folks. Get involved. Belly flops at hotels is fun, and people enjoy them, right? Boys chirped me about mine, though. They said I went two feet first, and I wasn't hitting belly hard enough. But the first tournament, when I did it, I jarred my neck because I over-rotated. So, I, you know, I think I I over-adjusted. <laughs> but that was a heck of a pool fight after, eh, with the boys? They nearly drowned me a couple times. <laughs> they had the Lampton, uh, Lampton Shores boys over in the corner of the pool. Didn't know, know what was going on. No, that turned it. That turned into a <laughs> full Donnie Brook. <laughs> Still got it, boys. Come fight me whenever you want. <laughs> uh, fun I've style. got quite a few pictures of you doing belly flops now. It's uh. It's a thing. I've got a lot, way too many pictures of you with no shirt on my phone. <laughs> That's neat. Um, <laughs> you should see some of the photos other people have around the world of me doing <laughs> <game> speeches. <laughs> um, so you guys saw some pregame speeches this year um, when I was in Cardiff, <clears throat> and I got injured, and uh, my career was over, and would never play again. I just wanted to help the team win. And the coach was a lot and stressful and high, high go. And we, the coach and I both agreed that the boys need a laugh before the game. And remember, hockey's fun. I would get spray painted um, naked, dressed as different superheroes, and then do the pregame speech like I was that superhero. You did this multiple times? <laughs> it became a thing. I started, oh boy. <laughs> I started out nine and oh <laughs> as a pregame speaker. Yeah. I uh I can get quite passionate in pregame speeches. Um yeah. Um actually, fun fact is Colby at three years old did a pregame speech with me in pro hockey for the Cardiff Devils. <laughs> he was Hulk, I was Iron Man. <laughs> I hope he clapped his clothes on. He did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first game we lost, though, because um, the f the coach said to me, he's like, you know, if you get him involved, like, then it's a thing. And I was like, well, like, you think we're hitting the road with you guys, like going six hours away to do pregame speeches? It's like, yeah, I know what we're doing here. <laughs> and then we lost that game. So then Colby was out. <laughs> But yeah, they got pretty uh, ridiculous. Um, I was more clothed doing the pregame speeches this year. Um, and I hope I get to coach minor hockey again because, you know, I didn't do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got pretty hockey in Cardiff, Wales that year too. <laughs> got pretty outrageous. <laughs> but I'm growing up now, you know? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Anywho, where are we at? So <laughs> the last five minutes of the the last five minutes of the Walkerton game, um, in Walkerton, we were talking about that is the boys were frantic. Like they wanted it so bad that they forgot how to think and stick handle. <laughs> um they just wanted it so bad that they were just like chopping wood at everything and just shooting it as hard as they could. And um, to see them progress and like then to play so well in the all Ontario final game, um, that was pretty neat to see. Hey, eh, Jared, like they, they came a long way in the big moments from watching that last five minutes against Walkerton. And like, we did get through it. Yeah. <laughs> See there. It was interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm here. Yep. There you are. It was uh it was definitely interesting those last five minutes. There were some frantic plays, but it was a good teaching moment for the boys to, you know, prep for the OMHAs to say, like, hey, like, you know, when it comes down to this, just keep playing. Like they you know they know what to do in the D zone. They don't need to ice the puck and you know, press it against the boards. I mean, that's it's that's a it's got its time and place, but there was a few pucks pinned against the boards with like two minutes to go or three minutes to go. So. <laughs> yeah. That started becoming a thing. I'm like, when did we start just pinning against the boards? Like, why are we playing anymore? What's yeah. happening? <laughs> but what I thought was neat about it was they were frantic, but it was cause they cared so much. And, but it was like, once we kept giving them the puck back, cause we couldn't stick handle or shoot. It was like, guys were, were doing whatever it took to block a shot. They, they were playing with so much passion that like they just willed it that like we'd give up the puck but then three guys would go try to lay in front of it with their face you know <laughs> it was nuts fun stuff watching these kids do this eh i thought i thought it was neat was, about that last five minutes of that game was uh looking back on the the final game and the oh my chase there where we got that lead with a few minutes left found there <clears throat> like they were able to take that experience from before and not yeah there was a lot of panic and crazy stuff going on but uh they were able to use that moment from before and realize like yeah we can still play hockey like we can still go down on their end and <laughs> try and do something and not just ice it 20 times and you're right though they learned so much through this ride and like watching them play those last few minutes where the other team didn't get any chances and we hemmed them in their end and they couldn't do nothing about it compared to those last five minutes against Walkerton was, it was way, it was, it felt, it was better on the heart too, <laughs> you know, stressful moments, this playoffs, wasn't there? So Holt, did you get nervous when you were down four, three in the finals of the all Ontario's? No, to be honest, I, Nervous? No, I thought you know what the boys if they gotta have one more in the bag. That's it. But uh, it's all happening so fast when you're on the bench. You don't even have time to be nervous. I'm sh- I'm sure the fans in the crowd were a little frantic from the stories afterwards. But you got to just keep them rolling. Uh Gray Matter concurred in Ontario. Checkmate Ontario. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. um, yeah, no, like um, I I found when I'm not coaching um, you probably can get more frantic and um, you have no control. You're just watching. And it's like when you're coaching and deciding things, it's hard to get that frantic because you got to decide what's up next and all that stuff. Right. But there must've been some tense moments for the parents this weekend. eh? (laughs) Hey, big daddy humper. Oh yeah. You always say, you know, I always remember every goal and every minute of the game. I'm. I don't even watch what the forwards are doing half the time. I'm just, you know, I'm so worried about what the D are doing. And those moments like that, I, I have a hard time. I got to go back and watch the game footage again. I don't even remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I seem to recall most of it. Other than like sometimes you put your head down to say something to someone, and then you get a too many men on the ice penalty. A hole, <laughs> huh? Yeah, you got it. Did we was that our only too many men on the ice penalty this season, or did we have more than one? We had more than one. Uh, I think we've had more than one. Some of the boys got a little excited and jumped out. Mm, you're gonna blame them when you're in charge of the door, eh? <laughs> yep, I am. 
<laughs> you can definitely blame me for a few of them. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess you guys ran the D, but like it's pretty neat. Holt, um, you named the shed. <laughs> um, you wired the shed, and now we're in the shed. Um talking about winning all Ontario and we were the forward guys, right? Yep. <laughs> Fun so, stuff. Yep, we're forever connected now, no matter what no, goes on in life. Well, yeah. There's <laughs> no way around her now. All yep. the boys are brothers for life now, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um yeah, pretty neat seeing the red hats. Um they're they're Tom, they're neater than I thought, right? When I heard about these red hats, I was like a red hat like that's what you give people what happened to trophies and medals and stuff um but they are pretty <laughs> neat aren't they? they're nice yeah lots of detail on I, I i i knew there was red hats yeah but they are very nice they're well done mm-hmm. far down does a good job yeah um so anywho um i hear they're trying to take more money from us you know we had the nights in the hotel we had the extra night in the hotel because we won, and um, you got to have fun after you win. Um, I heard that now they're talking, you, you can buy rings too. They have official rings, but you got to buy them and instead of earn them. I thought we earned them, but um, I, I guess they just give you red hats and then say, Do you want to buy rings? I don't know. You know? Uh, Do you guys know about this? Holt, you knew about this. I might be privy to some of this. Yeah, there's a. Uh... They've sent out an offer, not an offer. Like there's been a thing that if you a want proposal. to have rings, a, yeah, if you want to have rings, they will let you buy rings. They're not. They're not. Uh, they li- they like to push the envelope too, eh? Like they gave us a red hot, and now they yeah. say, "Hey, now you got to buy this." <laughs> yeah, we'll sell you some diamond rings, and uh, we'll let you <laughs> jazz them up a bit. But rings are cool, so I don't know what you guys want to do about that. Maybe think it over. Well, they certainly know how to juice the money out of you because of this moment in time i'd i'd sell my house to do whatever it took to remember that moment as much as possible so <laughs> and that's when they have you right it's like yeah. once you won you get the email by the way we got more shit to sell you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got the link for like the champion's apparel now right like i already i got bought the sweater a day before we won and i didn't put it on because i thought last time i came here I didn't buy the sweater because I said I only want to buy it if we win. But then I thought I was proud of those boys. I was proud of the, that team I coached two years ago that they made it there. And I thought I wish I did have that sweater because I'd, I'd be wearing it. Um, so I bought this, but I didn't put it on. I just left it in my truck. And then getting to put it on after winning, it's like, well, I I don't need another sweater. <laughs> I got this one, you know. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. that Get, we get a red it. marker and just Take out the last couple letters. Right. Take off the take, ship. Champ. Take, oh, the hip. So yeah, take, take it off, off the hip. The hip. Yeah. And we, we won where the tragically hip are from in Kingston. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> it all makes sense when you talk about it. <laughs> so, Jared, I guess we'll bring up our coaching now because I don't know where we're at. Do you know where we're at? What we're are we talking about? Boss track. Me too. So, um, what I appreciate is we're all busy. Um you you have another kid in triple a that's a player um and fit right in with the boys and i always love it when hockey families are like everybody's hanging out together and um anywho um we're busy and we didn't really ever talk about practice plans ever um we'd just show up at the rink and we'd both have an idea what we wanted to do and it would take us approximately two minutes and 37 seconds to <laughs> have practice planned. <laughs> yeah. We were pretty well aligned on what we wanted to do though. You know, you would throw a couple things out and I'd throw a couple things out. And off we went. Yeah. And it's like, um, what, what do you think we need to work on? What do I think we need to work on? And we both proposed drills. And then what I thought was neat, I'd bring up a drill and you'd be like, well, why not like this? And then we'd make it better. And then you'd bring up a draw. I'm like, well, why don't we do it like this? And then we'd make it a little bit better. And it's like, it takes everybody's ideas to figure it out, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple things, like, throughout the year that I had, you know, that I really wanted to see the do-do just from past experience. 
like the D to D in the neutral zone. And that was something that I think, you know, that was, that was the secret to our, some of our success. Was, we did, we did you know, way we better those, than any other team. I agree. Yep. And when they pulled it off, it would look like butter. It was the real nice. They, D you know, to D right up to the wing and dump it in and yep. go get it again. Yep. Exactly. I feel like that, that was, that was something that, you know, at the start of the year, I was like, you know, that's the boys are ready. Like, you know, I'd coached some younger ages and you kind of knew you dabbled with it a little bit, but they couldn't quite pull it off. And, you know, I thought, all right, you 13, these guys can do this. They're skilled enough and it'll be a game changer if we could get it rolling. And our D were, they were pulling it off pretty comfortably by the end of the year. Well, and like, well, speaking of your decor is like the way all of them played is like, well, it takes everybody to win, but like you have Jacob, the horse that, you know, he he was the guy out there. He's he's high end, the D man, big, strong, kills people sometimes by accident. Um, <laughs> um, has the shot, has the offensive capabilities. He can do it all. And then Cole Wilsack, man, the weekend he put together, that guy was as reliable as anybody, and um, played as hard or harder than anybody. And did everything right all weekend long. And like this coaching thing can take a lot out of you. And I know we're all tired. It's late. But um, we're still a bit emotional about it all. Because when I went out on the ice. And it's a lot to take in. But like when I knew how hard that kid had worked. And I knew everything he had put into it. And then I saw him in tears of joy. And like you just see the look on his face. Like I can't believe we did this. It's like I I can't handle this shit no more. (laughs) But then you got Rooster, the guy that does everything right. I brought up before and mucks it up harder than anybody. And then you got Sheldon, Mr. Reliable, that just makes all the steady, easy plays. Ain't afraid to muck it up in the corners and push somebody down. Sometimes get a penalty because he hits them too hard. But like he did everything right all over the ice. He played D. He moved it up to the forwards. He did everything we asked of him. And then Little Humper, um, like, man, he's a gamer. He's a competitor, and I've coached him twice now. And it's like, when it's the big moments, like, he is ready to go. And he tries harder, as hard as anybody. And that is how you win, is having a team that tries harder than everybody. And I think our our decor were that and our forwards. It's weird to say it out loud. <laughs> You know? Yeah, the, I, yeah, the D had a good weekend. Like they were really shutting teams down in our own end, and you know, Knox made some big saves, but we were keeping them to the outside and not letting them get good chances. So, well, and they, so uh, my coaching thing is, is like, I you try to use your experiences. It's like when I got to pro, I didn't think I had been taught defensive zone properly, and the AHL was more like if you can't do it, we can't use you. And they weren't like teaching. Um, I got sent down to the coast and then the coach there is Derek Clancy, who's the assistant GM of the Leafs now. And the first day of practice in the coast, like he took time with me and he tried to make me better and he tried to work on the things I needed and he like cared. And, um, but like the first practice of the year, he painted the ice into quadrants and he like explained it like I try to. And he, I'm like, so as a right winger, like, you're telling me this is all I have to do. Like, you're, this is it. And it's like, I've been chasing people around for years. I'm like, you're telling me this is it. And from then on, it changed my whole career. And now a guy like that, winners win. He won three Stanley Cups with the Penguins. And he never coached again after that year. He's only been in the scouting world. But, like, he was an unbelievable coach and changed my career. But painting the ice and, like, showing them like you just keep them to the outside like don't overcommit. and the way our team did it and played d zone it's like defense wins championships and goaltending and it's like we had so many shutouts this year it was crazy <laughs> oh yeah absolutely and our, it would like our whole team would just roll back into our d zone and they'd be like all right here we are and it's not up. like everybody's nope, trying too hard yeah. going where they don't need to everybody just like knew what to do and just chillaxed until we got the puck. Yep. 
Yep, I know it was. It was another beautiful thing to see once they got that down and started to get some good D zone structure. And, you know, I you know you can see the tension from the stands, and you know I'd hear it from the parents a little after. Is oh man, we spent a lot of time in our zone, but you know we saw them just nice and comfortable and relaxed back there and keeping yeah. them to the outside and you know turning yeah, over not, not giving them anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Daytona Beach Bombers of Ohio. USA, um, in the East Coast, a ragtag bunch of just dandies went all the way to the finals with that guy that mm. painted the ice and taught us D zone. And we won most games two to one, one to nothing, and we just greased them out and uh, nearly shocked the world. Um, but it was a Nesbit that beat me in the finals with Idaho. Mm. But anywho, I'm gonna send fellas if anybody's listening. I'm going to send the Leafs assistant GM the picture you guys winning tomorrow because he's a part of this too. (laughs) Um, Because it it changed my world when he did that. And I thought, hmm, really doesn't have to be that complicated. (laughs) And that guy should coach again, but I guess he's good at what he does now if he's an assistant GM, you know? (laughs) Hey, Holt, you had a good idea when we got to the tournament. Kingston picture sign. That was a good one, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went for a little pre-morning walk before the walk, so I went out for one before that, checked a little scoping around just to see what was around that area, so. It was a nice area where we were staying, but Jared, I thought, the moment I thought we had a championship team, the moment I thought we could do her, was the first team walk at one of the first tournaments when we didn't tell anybody to do nothing. They were just walking. And then they all locked arm in arm and the whole team was walking as one. And I'm like, this is how you win, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I agree. There was there was a few moments that were kind of defining for me throughout the year that like showed the team culture coming together. And that is how you win. You know, you get that like winning culture and that like team culture in the dressing room and off the ice too. And then the boys have each other's back, right? Like you know, mm-hmm. once you start, once you start that like relationship, they got each other's back off, off the ice and on the ice. So yeah, we, we saw some cool stuff throughout the year. The boys started to gel. Having your yeah, and having each other's back, but like also like I've been on hockey teams where there's like jealousy, where it's like this guy scores a lot of goals, so then like or like I'm not scoring goals, so I'm acting like this and. It's like on our team, everybody scored. So it'd be hard to be jealous, but it's like everybody celebrated each other's goals as much as their own. Like the guy that Mm -hmm. scored was awfully happy, but man, those fellows were flying over to him to give him a hug, you know, big humper. You got that one. What's that? I don't know. Talk about it. It was pretty (laughs) neat. That that moment where we were walking in the morning sun do all over the grass it was absolutely (laughs) surreal and uh yeah it was one of those moments just i remember the four of us just looking at each other like holy shit look (laughs) what are these guys doing and then the attitude that they all brought to the dressing room for the rest of the year like by the end of the year the kids are chanting and slapping their sticks on the ground in unison and doing stuff in the change room when we're not in there and just listening to them from the outside it's like how many team meetings do they have on their own like players only stuff like that and like just like, <laughs> it I was like some of the dads was... going what are they doing and then you're like this, this, that's them i don't know they're doing their thing like they're, they're boys the being boys, boys. <laughs> yeah the boys are Doing their and they wanted it like and w- when you're you 13 teams having pregame meetings before the coaches come in because they know what time we're coming in and they're having the meeting before about what they want to do and it's like so it's not us that want it you guys want it and it's like there can be in minor hockey where the parents want it more than the kids and that was not the case with this team these fellas wanted it more than anybody and that is why they won hey holt oh absolutely they were uh tight-knit group and you know they all got along good i didn't hear any 
fighting and argue like there was no bullying there was no nothing there was they it was an amazing group there no quit the big thing was there was no quit they got they never got down even when we were losing games like i never seen anybody actually getting down blaming anybody like for when we were losing right well and like sometimes i guess the coaching could help a bit with that because like a I I don't really enjoy that. I wouldn't mm-hmm. accept it, and I know Jared wouldn't. It's like there was a, it's a couple times, right, where you just got to shut it down. Where a kid, it, it, the emotions get too much, and they're they're too yep. wound, and you're like, "Hey, zip it, boy!" <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's quitting in here, and we are gonna win this game <laughs> because I I truly believe and. Maybe it's from my experiences of when I went pro and I I had had a good college career and I have NHL teams watching me, but truly deep down in me, I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think a kid from Elmira, Ontario, that's five foot eight uh, with chicken legs and a beer belly could make it. And it's like, I, I didn't believe that they had like, were act, like, why why me? Why would they be watching me? And I didn't believe it. And then when I went to the AHL, I didn't believe it. And I was looking at all these guys that I'd seen on TV and I was like, Oh my God. And then I couldn't play like all, all of it got to me. And then when I went there, I did play like shit at the start. And it's like, you have to, when you go there, the guys I know that made it like they were confident. They believed in themselves. They, truly deep down thought they were going to make it. It It's like a guy at Western Michigan, Pat Dwyer, that ended up playing like 400 games. He was drafted by Atlanta. They're not signing him. He had a tough end to his college career. And I remember him saying to me one day in college, he says, I will play a game in the NHL. I will. I will do whatever it takes. And he did. And then I played him in pro like the next year when I'm not believing in myself. And he was the best player on the ice. And then he goes on to play in the NHL. And I'm like, well, maybe you should believe in yourself. Because if you don't, nobody else will, (laughs) you know? But I think we got some players on this team, you know? I think we have some – it's weird for me as a coach not to keep rambling. But it's like, I think we have some players on this team. And it's like, when I think of it, it's like, well, you don't win all Ontarios without players. The last time – Concurred one under 13. Garrett McFadden just played in Czechia this year and has been a captain everywhere he goes and has been a captain in the East Coast, the OHL. And then Ethan Skinner played pro and is now the guy on the Wolves. It's like um, winning gets people places. And I do think we have guys going places from this team. Okay. Stop. I'm done rambling now, Jared. You go. <laughs> I've, I don't know. I think I was just going to talk about confidence. I think you, you touched on there about, like, you know, I I'm, rambled. When, when you rambled about some confidence stuff, and I think that was critical for these boys this year, too. Like, I, I've coached a few teams, and, you know, you've I've seen all sorts of different coaching styles. And from my experience, you know, a kid plays better when they get, are confident in themselves and they can get into that like flow state of play. And, you know, this year for me, that was a big focus is just to, you know, really get our guys believing in themselves. And, you know, when you believe in yourself, you can do anything like, and we, you know, it definitely helped that we came back after a lot of hockey games. So, you know, I think that having that in your back pocket, knowing that you can always win it, even if you're down helps, but you know, I think, Kids that are confident play better for sure. Kid, I uh, yeah, We're like my philosophy really would be, be confidence, obviously, and then loving it, enjoying going there. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. the kids that show up at hockey and it's not that fun, and maybe the coaches don't explain why this is happening or that's happening, and it's just happening and they don't understand and they're not having that much fun and maybe they're getting yelled at. And then like, you think that kid goes home and like starts shooting pucks. And it's like, you know, it's like, I have heard of a few fellows on our team that like put the air pods in or whatever they're called earbuds 
and like just shoot pucks and like they get the tunes pumping and like they're loving it and it's, i guess it would be hard not to when you win every game <laughs> <laughs> But I think you need to love it and you need to be confident in yourself. And then it's like, you never know what you can do. It's like my fat ass won championships in Germany, Denmark, and the UK. And it's like, well, if I can do it, it's like you kids are already as big as me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yep, thinking out loud. Anywho, there was a lot of hockey going on, though, by the end of the year, right? Like, so the horse and Magok and Rooster and all the boys had all these rituals. And as a season progresses, rituals become a thing, right? Like once you've done it, you do it again. And I thought it was neat. And I thought all the stars line this weekend when like, I'm getting ready for the finals and I'm doing my sit out in the truck <laughs> until 35 minutes before the game, um, getting ready for a pregame speech and, I, I don't want to do all the small talk for half an hour when I want to come in guns a blazing. Um, so um, a buddy of mine from the Sugar Kings from 23 years ago texts me and says, big game, big game. And that's what the goalie would say on the Sugar Kings back in Junior B when he won the Southern Cup. And then I would always, because I was like going through puberty with a cracked voice, say, couldn't call it a small game and I would like crack my voice and then all the boys would laugh and then we'd go out and play and he texted me that like right before we were going in for the finals <laughs> and like all these rituals and then I had to go out and meet the dads and get my pregame ritual and then give everybody that's standing around <clears throat> with their yetis um, give them all a fist bump and then I'd go in hot and then you guys would have everything sorted out in the room. But like then every kid had different ritual, right? <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> Holt, did you see all the rituals? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was lots of them going on. Like who get what sticks and who does this and where they even where they even sat by the end. Which kids went out first, first on the yeah. ice? Yeah. Second, third, last. <laughs> the last three kids were... Brady, or sorry, Dalton, Colby, and then Brady, right? Yeah, Brady's last. Yeah, and um, they had that ritual, and then the the horse would have to sauce it across the ice for Jack to tip it in, and or the whatever the opposite. But like, there was so much hockey going on. Then you get the mums and the tight orange pants, and you're like, "Geez, this is a lot of hockey going on around here." <laughs> <laughs> And even our goalie's dad, Rob, was getting his face painted by the daughters before the games, right? <laughs> a lot of hockey happening in Kingston this weekend. Anywho. I, I think there's enough rituals there with those boys that I didn't even know what was going on. But I knew that if they're doing something slightly weird or off or like whatever. just Unusual. <laughs> Yeah, just let it go. I don't know what's happening, but it's clearly a thing, so just let them be. And just let them be. And I I do think that was a big key to our success was let them be. It's like, if you see something you got to talk to them about, talk to them, but let them be boys. And I couldn't be prouder of the way they came together. And you see them at that parade, man. That was pretty magical. We haven't really talked about that. So, um when we win and we stay an extra night in Coburg, Ontario, and um, every kid, every boy in the team was there, siblings were there, everybody got to just enjoy the experience. Um, then we wake up the next morning and head back to Concordon and decide we are having a parade. Whether the fire department or police department like it or not, we are having a parade. Then you guys get a trailer. You get all the stuff to decorate it, and it's like it takes everybody to win. And it's like you get everybody put together a parade within like a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jared, you take that one. Yep. Yeah. So we we all hiked back to town, and um, we made up some social media posts to try to get a bunch of people out 
downtown and plastered those around the social media and and uh, we met down at Cannot Park and um, loaded into the back of a, a trailer and uh, Holt drove the boys downtown and it was actually a heck of a turnout too like it was, really was I, didn't, I was thinking you know maybe the parents a few grandparents out there but there was a few pretty big pods of fans out there and I think it was pretty cool for the boys you could hear when we were driving through the town you know the, the boys were like oh my god look at all the people out there and you know they're pretty excited to see everyone out supporting them well and that's small town living it's like you win in a city it ain't the same as coming back to Concord and, and doing something like that and having people show up and care. Um, and shout out to Ryder Dietrich, who um, played with Colby, and I coached him two years ago. Um, we get back to Concord and there's a congratulations sign on the front window. And from what mm-hmm. I understand is he did that – for all of his former teammates from that year. And um, for a kid to do that, who didn't wasn't on the team this year, um, to do that for his brothers, and uh, that was pretty neat, you know? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Ryder. Keep up the good work. <laughs> and, Tom, you were there, I guess, that, that when – yeah, I would say we became brothers for life uh, with him was that one game showdown with the ice dogs two years ago to get to the all Ontario. Well, that was how we were going to get to the all Ontarios, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I remember quite well. All of a sudden I'm in charge of the, the D bench in a huge <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other coach couldn't make it. He had to work. And then yeah, it was me and you <laughs> right at the bench and we pulled her off. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually that, Mini Stanley Cup is right there, uh, right beside the red hat and medal, but or medal right now. But anywho, um, pretty neat stuff. Um, quite the crew we have around Concord, Ontario. And Colby said that to me the other day. He said, uh, it was going to Ontario. So he goes, we're pretty lucky, um, in this small town that we have so many good hockey players. And I said, huh, you're right, sir. There's only a lake over there. <laughs> you know, there's nobody else. <laughs> hey, Holt. Yes, sir. There's uh, We do uh, are pretty fortunate to have a pretty good little, uh, not a little group, but a good group of hockey players. And uh, there's quite a pool to choose from. So it's uh, it's nice when you have 15 players with that type of depth. I'm always going to go back to the depth. We had... The depth was unbelievable. Depth wins championships. There's quite a bit of passion in this town for hockey. I remember when we were doing that parade, or, um, there was, I remember quite a few young guys that were like in their young 20s, I recall, stopping and uh, like m- making a point of coming down there that don't know these kids or whatever, but they just must have got out of minor hockey in the last year or two and uh, know how big of an achievement it was and came to congratulate the kids there. So it, it, it It's quite the community around here. And uh, when you see everybody come together like that in such a short time, and it took the parents again, um, it took everybody. Um, I mean, we showed up in Coburg and everybody was back and made it happen. And it's like, it was the same as our team all year. It was like, no matter what's up against us, it's like, we're going to pull this off. <laughs> and we had a parade. Parades are fun. <laughs> you know? Good stuff. Way to go, everybody. Um, Anywho, Summer Shindig. When are we having that? We got to have one. Oh, absolutely. This can't be over yet, can it? We have to have a few, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have reunions when you win championships. I know. I, I, I've i heard. I had Sam and Jacob in the car to lacrosse trials on Monday there. So it, it, uh, right after the parade or whatever. We're Episode 363, <laughs> the horses. Yeah. Okay, help. A couple horses. Uh, the, anyway, Sam starts talking about what we're, what the team's doing next. So, like, 
when our next practice is. We're going to go out for breakfast. We're going to have another practice after that. Then we're going to do the father-son game. <laughs> he definitely did not want that season to end. <laughs> the was not enough for them. Honestly, though, I think they're all like that. Um, I think they all want to see each other again. They all want to get on the ice again. And uh, we probably should figure that out because um, – it's pretty neat when like I had when we had them on there and like they're like we want to have a spring team we want to do this we want to do that and it's like like that doesn't work when some of you're getting into contact and have mustaches and some of you don't and you're different you're not the same age group and it's like man it's amazing how fast time flies because like you don't get this time back and uh, what's neat for me is like I'd win with someone elsewhere in the world and then i'd never see them again we'd have our two days of doing her and then you you wouldn't see them again you're on different teams and you'd literally never see them again and that's how i started this and it's like everybody from here is from king garden like they're gonna see each other all the time and it's like it's not so sad <laughs> you don't have to leave and never see each other again <laughs> this is way better Oh, once you win something big like this, too, like you're connected for life. And I know we've said that a few times. And I know when I when I was in minor hockey, I was in Bantam and I was affiliated with the midget team. My Bantam team got put out. So myself and uh, another individual went up and played with the midget team for their all Ontario run and we won it. And he, that those boys that I played with, they, they were two years older than me at the time. I was in grade nine, they were in grade 11. I hung out with them all through high school after that. Like, we were just instantly connected, you know. And before that, they didn't know me at all. We changed won the Ontario's together, and it changed everything. So Winning does change uh, everything, and it changes, yeah. yeah, what people believe they can do, too, right? It's like, I, I do think teams can get mental blocks of, like, Oh, like that team again. Oh, that team again. And it's like, I think that three nothing comeback against Walkerton. I know we had beat them other times in the season, but it was like when we did that in the first playoff game, then when we went into that series against them, like the boys deep down were like, we are doing this and we are going to win. And you have to believe it for it to happen. You know, didn't agree more. Yep, 100%. Anywho. Um, <laughs> so I there's a lot of things we could talk about. Um, I don't know how far back we go. You guys got anything to say before I bring something up to talk about? <laughs> Jared, you got anything? No? Um, I, one other thing I, I was thinking about... Um, there was a few times throughout the year I thought was pretty cool that the boys would start doing something and then we would kind of clue in as coaches like, oh, like they're going to do that. We should go over that in practice. Like uh, the low cycle, I remember kind of, I think it was like kind of the start of playoffs. We saw Colby's line just starting like a good cycle going on in the corner. We're like, huh, like look at them go down there, like moving the puck to each other like a pro team. So then, you know, we started incorporating that into some practices and got them, you know, a little, got all the lines doing it, kind of used it as another, you know, tool in our toolbox. But I thought that was cool that, like, you know, the boys well, did it themselves to start. I and thought we what, were like, as, all right, let's build on it. When we would split up the forwards and D and I'd try and do the cycle with them, and it was early in the season, and I was trying to do it with them, and they weren't getting it and it wasn't really going that well so i kind of like left it alone for a while and uh and let them just play and then uh then i saw them kind of start doing it on their own and then it was like okay so like now let's practice that because now you guys are starting to do it and then come the end they were like they they had her down <laughs> that was neat yeah. yeah, absolutely. Moving it was like uh, when you come team. up with like a D zone face off play, and like it's like, well, I want to do something so they have a plan, but not risk anything defensively because we're defense first. 
And then we came up with that play of like D kept pinching when you'd go around the net. So it'd be fired off the glass and out to the far winger going. And then when it would happen, when they would do it, and it's like we get a breakaway off of it, it'd be like, that's cool. <laughs> and it did happen, didn't it, Jared? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it happened a few times. Yeah, we got a couple of good breaks off that one. And that was one of those plays that even when it was broken, it worked. Like, it got the puck out and got us into the neutral zone, and off we went. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it was neat seeing them, like, when you tell them to do something and like they do it, it was like, uh, I missed one game this season. You guys were playing Godrich and I couldn't make it and neither could Colby. And, um, you told me they did the drop back yep. and I saw the video on YouTube and I watched it. And, um, cause thanks to tripod, right. Takes everybody to win. Thanks for v- filming all the games this season. So everybody could watch from, like my parents were watching in Panama and Florida, and I'm sure everybody else's families were watching. It takes everybody to win, and thank you for YouTube and the games, right? Way to go, tripod. Uh, <laughs> but when I saw that video of them do the drop back on the power play, nearly broke my heart. I was too full. I was too much for me, Jared. Do you remember it? You told oh, yeah. me they did it, and I saw it, and I yep. was like, it was perfect. Yep, and then they absolutely. went in and scored. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was one of those plays all season that we practiced. And yeah, there was only, you know, a handful of times that it got executed right. But uh, when it did, it was good. Like it, it stopped everyone in their tracks. No one knew what, they, what was coming at them. When I could tell the boys were hesitant about it because uh, there was a couple times where I'd be like, hey, we're working on the drop back. And the D would be like, oh, Oh, and I'm like, you guys don't think you can do this. You can do this. And then when you see them actually do it, I thought it was hilarious because I was trying to teach it. I didn't know. It's under 13. I haven't coached this age group. I just always think if you think you can do it, you can. And then the very first time we ever did it, and it was sloppy, but Jacob just skated it up and dropped it back to Colby and Port in an exhibition game. And he skated through and scored. And I was like, see, it does work. (laughs) And then nobody would do it again for like months. (laughs) Uh, But it does work. (laughs) Um, Holt, nice shirt, by the way. See that? Yeah. It's been going on for quite a while now, eh? Since you named this. (laughs) Any royalties coming? What? I'd have to make money for you to make to get any royalties. <laughs> but there so like when we just won and it's like there's a lot of hockey going on in the world. The UK this weekend is their playoff start and like all these teams I usually talk to and try and shed boost their players and help them out. Um that's all happening and all I can think about is the Canucks. So sorry folks. I, I don't know if I'm making it to the UK this week. <laughs> Everybody's just going to have to go out there and play their best. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Cause Tom, how have you been at work this week? Have you been able to focus? Cause I've had a hard time. It's been a little distracting. Luckily I got a guy training to do the job with me. So I would just keep telling him he's on his own. He, he's got it. <laughs> yeah. And there's a few people that want to talk about it, right? Like I always say winning gets people talking and it's amazing when we won the the game and then like we have our little celebration for a little bit. And I just looked at my phone and there was 22 messages, <laughs> you know? And it's like, this is what winning does. Winning gets people talking and it's like well why does this team win like what was it about them and it was like well look at these players man like they're hockey guys and it's like you saw our last practice before that tournament jared and it's like i knew we were ready and i knew we had everything we need because they went out there and it was like i was watching a professional hockey practice they all went out there and wanted it they were passing heart i'm burping a lot um, they were talking to each other. They 
we're holding each other accountable. And it was like, jeepers, these guys are ready, right? Yeah, they they never really, like, you know, over towards the end of the season, I find, you know, the players have played a lot of hockey. The parents are kind of at that point. Not, not with this team. Like, even when we were prepping there for last weekend, like, every practice, they just showed up and, you know, went to work. And that was, that's what was cool. They wanted to be there, and they were into it. They were into it. And uh, I one other one we should bring up, because um, I almost threw up, was uh, the <laughs> last weekend there. Um, before we go, because you win your – playoffs and then you have like a three week break of just practicing so we had practice in the morning then we go down to the Bruce in concurrent Ontario folks for brunch and it was lovely and the Savage 8 9 crepes what a savage um, but then we go back and it's like okay like these boys need to burn off some energy they need to compete let's make this a game and we broke them up into three teams right and Jared, we needed a sixth D man, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got the tap on the shoulder. Nearly, uh, it was a lot. I hadn't exercised in like six years, and then I got right into like a sixty minute game. <laughs> you know, uh, but I was getting the AED ready at the end of it to I, use on you. I wasn't I, sure you were going to make it. <laughs> I was having a tough go there. Um, yeah, I. Uh, Apparently, if you don't use it, you do, in fact, lose it. Um, <laughs> conditioning is still a factor. <laughs> but anywho, um, Holt, did you enjoy my TJs this year? We used to always get tape jobs before the practices. They came up with some clever ones, didn't they? Yeah, they were uh, very unique, I will say. I uh, <laughs> don't know if you'd take those into the actual gameplay, but uh, it was good. I was I enjoyed watching you uh, try and use it during the uh, practices and even more so in the game. I wish you would have got that last one year, that last practice. That would have been an interesting one to see you play a game with. When they had a puck taped to the knob and two pucks taped below the blade, or yeah. one puck, yeah, pucks yeah, taped to pucks, the blade. That four pucks on that stick. Hey, I still made it happen, and I just wanted to show them that there's no excuses. Play like a champion, right? <laughs> uh, it was fun, though. And, uh, yeah, that one bat wing um, tape job they did, that was like a lacrosse stick, eh, Tom? And that's the world you're in now. Yeah, they had it right from the toe of the blade up to halfway up the shaft. <laughs> there was multiple times you were using the stick in practice. Just go. I was just like... <laughs> You're as crazy as the kids are, <laughs> especially that last one. You're pretty near passing the puck with a shaft of your stick to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Well, someone one just told me recently, and I was like, "Oh, the kids," and they're like, "Well, you're a kid," and I was like, <laughs> "I don't know if that's true." I get pretty serious, right, Jared? Yeah, you got your moments. <laughs> I think the kids, the kids, uh, they appreciate you because you're. You're on their level at times. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm grown up. <laughs> Whatever. Talking about grown up. Um, Holt, I guess you uh, organized this game. We played a, I always say it's a hockey community, a family. You set up, it was Mount Bridges, right? We played an exhibition game where their team brought a bus with no parents, just the coaches, and just had a boys' night and cruised to play us in Concord, Ontario, and we didn't even have a goalie, right? <laughs> yeah, and Knox. Yeah, Knox was sick that weekend. Actually, he was sick for the weekend, so we had to actually get in touch with the Mount Bridges team prior to them coming up here because it was already prearranged. They'd already booked their big charter bus and spent thousands of dollars on this bus to come up here in a big team building exercise, and uh, we had to call them up and say, uh, we don't have a goalie. And uh, I said, would you guys graciously mind uh, lending us one of your goalies? And they were fully on board. Absolutely. No problem at all. And uh, they brought over and we took one of their goalies and I forget their names, but uh, I think the boys had the time of their lives. Yeah. I think it would have been a memorable night. And I always say it's interesting how it all works out with these like 
whatever you want to call them, hockey gods. It's like both goalies for their team played for us that day and nobody won or lost. We tied the hockey match yep. and um, everybody can go home like we didn't win, we didn't lose, and um, everybody had fun, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, and well, then Mount they shaved Bridges, my head. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, you forgot that part of the story. Mount Bridges right. and all these came over and gave you a little bit of a trim after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the boys had already shaved my head pretty good, and then those goalies came over and, like, were really nice kids and wanted to give me, like, a good haircut. Right. And our boys weren't having that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I ever did tell you this story. I might have told one of the other coaches, but uh, when uh, the handshake was going on there prior to the game, or maybe it was even before the game, I seen the Mount Bridges coaches were kind of looking over at you and they're staring over at you. And then I went over and we were talking about the uh, iPad and getting all the game set up. And they're like, yeah, your coach there, I, they said, is he all right? And I said, <laughs> oh, yeah. And they said, yeah, he's fine. They go, oh, like, Okay, they kind of gave me this look, and I'm like, uh, "Yeah, he's all right." And they're like, "Like medically, he's okay." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and they said, "I said, oh, I said he did that himself, or the kids did it to him." And he goes, "Oh, okay. We thought he just got out of the cancer. We didn't know if he had cancer <laughs> because you were missing blocks of hair on your head and stuff. So they thought maybe you had <laughs> just got out for your chemo or something. They didn't know what was going on." <laughs> Yeah, well, um, yeah, I guess the the boys shaved my head. Um, didn't seem to care too much about what I looked like. Um, and yes, I did go to work for a week like that. Because <laughs> if you can't have fun at work, where can you? Um, but um, everybody loved my hair at work. But um, then it, I, there were some kids that had missed that practice, so I didn't want them to miss out on shaving my head. And then we played that team and it's like, well, if you goalies didn't play for us, we don't have a game today. So it's like, well, you should get involved too. It takes everybody to win. You get, they were, were sitting in our room for like our pregame speeches and they're on the <laughs> other team. It was weird. It was funny. Uh, but yeah, then they got to shave my head after, you know, and it looked good. Yep. Really good. Um, I'm pretty grown up. <laughs> Um, okay. What else do I got? Somebody got anything other than let's see here. Big Humper. You weren't even there. I can't ask you when we won the Windsor tournament, Jared, I thought that was when I knew what we had when, when that final game against Grand Rapids, when like they were a good team, but like we went three, nothing. But it was like, it wasn't, it was what the boys went through. It was like, we had kids get hurt throughout the game. There was boogers, there was snot, there was tears. And they kept Locking getting shots. up and ready yep. to go. They did whatever it took. They did what it takes to win a championship. And I was like, well, if you can do that, we can do anything. <laughs> I thought there was a few like defining games in that tournament. The Bell River game that was all rough and chippy and like, you know, and our boys just we took some penalties for sure and killed them off, but our boys just kept playing and you know, we ended up beating them three nothing and it was like a complete game, I thought. That's where I started seeing like complete games being played by our boys. And then we went in in the semis. We were down one nothing to Burlington, and then came back and won seven one. So that was a pretty impressive performance that the boys put on there. Well, that that game really sticks out to me because I remember it. Like it was one nothing going into the third, but we yeah. had basically killed penalties the entire game, yeah. um, and. I remember saying to them in between the second and third, it's like, we are going to finish this kill and then we are going to break them. We are going to go out there and break them. They cannot play with you five on five. And then we got one, then we got two, and then we got, and then all of a sudden we scored seven goals in the third period of a semifinal game. <laughs> and it was like, and I remember when their coaches were complaining that the last period was for 15 minutes because they only wanted to play 10. And I was like, 
<laughs> well, we got you now. <laughs> uh, but that was a huge game. And then I remember the final, like the block shots that guys had um, the compete. And like when you saw the desire in their eyes and like that, they were a team team then um, for the second and third period, Savage couldn't even use one arm. And I just kept putting <laughs> He just, we just kept rolling three lines because I'm like, can you play? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> Block some shots. <laughs> yeah. uh, but like, that's what it takes. It takes get digging down deep and doing whatever. And they showed me they can do it that game. And man, they showed it another 40 times. <laughs> So, yeah, that last weekend there, uh, kids blocked quite a few shots and come back to the bench hurt. And I remember just saying them every time, like, that's what it's going to take to do this. Good job. Take some breaths and get back in this and do it again. And you should have seen the look in their eyes every time. Every kid I said it to were just like this – this fierceness no. come out in their eyes as soon as you say that to them where they're like you're oh, right and i'm going to go do it again even though i can't even stand up right now but <laughs> and they and they did over and over and over again and it's like in the was it the final game when brady got put into the boards <laughs> tough and that kid's a tough little bugger and he came to the bench and i know him he he wants to help the team win and when we'd asked him, like, if he's good to go, or you asked him, he was like, I think I'll be limping. Like, I'm not, sh I don't, like, he was thinking, I don't want to be a liability. I want to go out there and help. And he was unsure. And then in between periods, he got to go out for a skate and be like, I can do this. And then he went out and, and did everything. And it was like, Man, you kids are tough little buggers. <laughs> uh, fun have a hell of a third period after that. It was pretty impressive to see him bounce back like that. Where he was definitely nursing it, but it didn't give. It didn't matter to him. Well, and like, yeah, you see how dedicated these kids became to each other and to the team, and like what it takes and then like they actually did it and like we're all standing here wearing red hats it's just so <laughs> funny ah <laughs> oh, good stuff <laughs> um so big daddy humper you're into lacrosse season now and you're taking both horses to a new town and um they don't even know you're coming and they win at lacrosse and hockey. So you're probably going to change a new town and then they're the team to beat. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty surreal experience. Kind of stand there with <clears throat> not one single person, you know, there and bringing two kids who just won a provincial championship their last season there. That are the same size as me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did measure there. You still got the edge on them, but them, not, them, much. Huh? not much. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's a that's a different experience. Uh, especially for the boys, like they're very uh, they're hesitant to show well, them what God. I feel like which well, is you gotta get used to being on new teams, and it's like you can grow up and just concord and just play for concord. But like eventually in hockey, you have to get used to being on different teams. And some people get into it younger than others. I did. I got into triple a and meeting different kids at young ages and you get used to being on the new team and how to gel and how to find your way. But like, it is tough at that age. It's the same as playing those big games. It's like you go into a new room where, all those kids could know each other and then you're the two new kids and it's a lot to handle. And then it's a lot to play like you actually can. Cause you're not comfortable, you know? Yeah. I think I was the uh, first try out there. I remember going to the change room, Sam and Jacob taking forever again and being like, can you please hurry up and 
Jacob forgot his gloves. So I was like, also give me those gloves because that kid's mom wants to leave. <laughs> um, and they were by themselves. And I was, I was like, I don't know if every other kid left that change room already or if you guys are just in a different change room. <laughs> I remember on the way home tonight, Aston Sam was like, so did you go to the, were you in a change room with other kids? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, good. I just wasn't <laughs> sure if you guys were hanging out like so just unsure of you. yourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just the two of you in your own change room or what? Well, you get you, you you get used to it, right? And you just keep going into new locker rooms, and then eventually it's just like, okay, like I'm used to this because I went through that as a kid, and it is a weird experience when you join a team where you like don't know people, and then yeah. you go do it, and it's different than like what our boys just experienced, right? Like these kids are from Concord, and they go to school together, they see each other all over the place, see each other in grocery stores, and like we just won everything it's wild <laughs> yeah, if they're not if they're not the same school well there's only a chain link fence between your school and their school so you're <laughs> throwing balls with them between at recess anyways so. yeah 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 it's a lot different um well i you guys might have busy days tomorrow i don't know how long you guys got here eh? but um holt you had a hotel draft lottery um i thought that was really hockey um you did that with Johnny, my, our boy in the neighborhood. And uh, that was for all the grandparents and all the people that want to come watch us play in the championship and like who got this extra hotel room. Um, like it's kind of weird that we play tournaments in Kingston where not everybody can be here and all together. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> that was definitely, uh, well, there was a lot of high interest, you know, this was a high, uh, high interest event. So there was a lot of people looking for these hotel rooms and uh, might add a few pops earlier in the day. I forget what I might have been celebrating something else. And then I think Jared sent me a text that night and he's like, hey, I thought you were hosting this uh, video draft lottery. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm. So I had uh, kind of impromptu there, yeah. So, but anyways, it all pulled it together and, you know, we got all the selections in there and hopefully everybody that wanted a room got one because, you know, it'd be a shame if they didn't, but might have been the Eclipse too, could have played into it. <laughs> well, when it comes to the Red Hats, they gave us a few extras and I, I was like, like, I'm going to take these. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them, but then what I did with them was uh, Mr. Sack, the Sack's old man. Um, who was the most reliable D man all weekend long, did everything, um, played his heart out. Um, his old man was the extra door opener guy when Big Daddy Humper had to work. And he won that first championship with us in Windsor. And I was very impressed by him that like he just blended in. He just was like, What do you guys want me to do? And and he did it and we won that weekend. And I thought man that guy deserves a red hat he won our first championship with us and he was a part of this and he was willing to do whatever it took right jared like you ask yeah. him to jump he'd be like well how, how high <laughs> yep absolutely you know he that was good that was good of you to include him because yeah i agree it it took a lot of different people throughout the year so mm -hmm. It does take everyone to win. And then the other guys were uh, Big Willie and uh, the Big Rig, Easton, um, our APs that, you know, every team's different. But it's like when you have APs that show up, ultimate alternate players, folks, that um, they were our guys if we needed anybody. They'd show up to practice, work hard, blend in with the boys, and, uh, like, they got to be a part of it. And then Lenny, the goalie um, – I mean, we didn't have a backup goalie and he came to Kingston and was a part of it and got to be a part of it. And um, he was more than able to go into the net if we needed him. And it takes everybody to win. And for him to come and be a part of it, like they all deserve the red hats, right? Oh, yeah. Big shout, big shout out to Lenny. He, yeah. yeah, all year long, he showed up to practice, gave us a second goalie and played that final game in Windsor with us when their team didn't make it on. He came with us and 
help support us into that final game. And then, yeah, the whole weekend in Kingston, he, he's, and, you know, I, I don't have enough good things to say about him. He's, he was great on the bench. There were so many times where, you know, our D would make a good play and Lenny would come down the bench and give him a big hug, like right after they got off the ice. So he was, uh, he was I saw him hugging team. forwards too, man. He was right, <laughs> yeah. right in there, right involved. And, um, yeah, no, it, it takes everybody to win and, uh, took all of them. And, um, yeah, so I we delivered the red hats. <laughs> yeah, um, well deserved. Yes, I agree, and um, it was an amazing year, guys. Um, like from the three on three tourney when we weren't allowed in the tournament, that you know, wouldn't bring whatever. Um, we have a three on three tournament, and like how much fun we had. Um, and I played goalie. And, uh, you know, won a championship, right, Holt? Yeah. Coaching. That was coaching in that weekend. You were my coach. <laughs> That's what I'm and saying. you gave me my first <laughs> shutout puck. I have it up there with yeah. um, my stuff there. I have my first shutout puck. It's up there. And thank you for that. Yeah. No. That was a lot of hard coaching that weekend. So. Yeah. And that was fun. And then we had a shaker after at the uh, Big Daddy Humper's place. And that was fun, too. I think everybody had fun. Big oh, huge yeah. game of manhunt after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was. That gold chain, Jared, though, eh? We 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 try to <laughs> give it out, then we'd give it to someone, they wouldn't bring it to the game, and then it would be like, Well, everybody wins, who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have that around that whole lot. Got lost a few times and people forgot to bring it. It was interesting how from the start of the year till the end of the year, it was like, well, that chain actually doesn't mean anything. It's like, yeah. it's just about our team winning. And like, that's how they were. They didn't care about it. They wanted, they just wanted to win the games, you know? Yep. No, I agree. They were it, it, sometimes giving away the player of the game like that, you know, can have a negative effect. But I found with our boys, they were, you know, they were happy to get it. But they also, when we forgot it, they, you know, they were just as happy just to hear their name shouted out for their hard work that they had throughout the game. So, uh, when it, it took everybody, and seeing these kids become like hockey guys that like they're not worried about their own goal and assist because in hockey, I think that is where things get way off track. Is everybody's so worried about themselves and goals and assists and their ice time and this. And it was like seeing these kids like get it. And it was like, even when there'd be a penalty called and there might be a kid I maybe don't use as often on the penalty kill, the penalty would happen and I wouldn't even say anything. And he just moved to the end of the bench. Like, I know what's going to happen. I know what he's doing. And it was like, you guys all get that. Like, we're just trying to win. And it's like, I'm going to, try and use you how I can to win. And, um, but like everybody was involved, everybody could play in any situation. And it was like each time when we'd get a penalty was so difficult for me. Cause I was like looking at them and I'm like, so who do I say is not going because everybody can go, <laughs> you know? A good problem to have. <laughs> Especially in, Little concurred in Ontario, Canada, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you speak of a three on three. You know, we had probably 65 games this year, probably just as many practices, if not more. Like we, we were on the ice a lot. And, you know, we mixed in a lot of fun stuff, though, so that the kids never really lost interest, which I think you have to do to keep, keep the volume up high. You got to keep, keep it light. Can't, you know, uh, and can't I, just uh, be bag skating and, you know, going over your systems constantly, you know, where the kids are just kind of burning out. You got to get to mix in some fun stuff. Well, I think it has to be fun. And honestly, I think not going in that tournament was a good thing for us. Not that I didn't want to, but it's like we didn't play Walkerton another time where they see what we're doing and we see what they're doing. And um, we got to have a day where – those kids competed as hard as you would in any tournament 
we had a team party. There was no stress. It was just all fun. And uh, I thought it was a great day. And I think I'm a great, great goaltender. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you got anything to say? You lost just, to me that day, didn't you? Sorry. Weren't you a coach of one of the teams? Didn't you lose to? I was in the you finals against me? you, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? that's right. Yeah, Won that I one too. I was against you as a hour loss, but uh, <laughs> the the moments like those always stand out to me. Like, yeah, those boys got together at the beginning of the season, and they're you know walking through the that field or whatever, arm in arm. Yes, but I've, I'll never forget to get them <laughs> to have those boys to the point where you couldn't separate them. They're you're doing those player meetings. They're doing all this stuff impromptu. No, none of us told them to do anything. How, where they all have their backs, where they're they're coming, moving. Everyone's moving on the bench and not saying a word. And I know they're they're what's happening on the ice and what's going to about to happen in different situations. And no one has a problem with it because they're all brothers. It's moments like that where you said like that three on three tournament. Or we have that that breakfast in between a couple of practices. It's uh, it's the moments like those that like that's what brings the team together. Like that to me, that will always stand out. Like it's we could have got last place this season in the WIA, and it still would have been amazing, right? Those boys would still have a huge connection with each other. Mm. That like. If you, you finished last them. and lost everybody, they there would be a lot of finger pointing and it'd be a lot of parents upset about stuff and letting us know what we should be doing. Yeah, um, but I do agree that like the fun parts are what you remember. It's like I remember the Definitely. three on three more than a lot of other things. Um, but I also think that helps us win is that those kids had so much fun playing three on three against each other and they were trying to beat each other as hard as they tried to beat anybody else. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you go back and have a team party and everybody hangs out and has fun. And it's like, yeah, we competed and now it's over. Um, I think that's hockey, <laughs> you know? And yeah, then exactly. like, then they play a serious game of manhunt, the gold chains lost and um, everybody had fun. <laughs> yep. Those, those moments really bring the team together. Like, yeah, and um, I, I mean, I had a shutout. I won a championship. I never thought I'd win a championship again as a player, but I did, <laughs> and a, as a goaltender. <laughs> I just remember a lot of laying on the ice. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking them out, man. Kicking them out. I was laying on the ice nearly <laughs> in that game there last week. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, Holt, you got anything else over there? You've been pretty quiet lately. No, I'm just trying to think here what all the big, what other little uh, things that happened. As you say, she was a, a whirlwind of the season. It happens. Like, it just seemed to just fly by. Like, I, I still remember when the tryouts were happening. Like, way back, tryouts were going on. <sighs> To the start of the season to now, like it just seemed like when the game ended there, when we got back from Kingston last or got back, had the parade, and then you're just sitting at home and you're like, wow, it's over. Yeah, it all happened. And it's just um, like a, a whirlwind how it just went from tryouts to the season, and boom, she's now over. And I, Colby even said it to me. He goes, it feels like not long ago that we were just having tryouts for this team. And it's like that, I think that was like how much fun everybody was having was like, everybody wanted to go to practice. Everybody wanted to go to the game. It's like, I've been on teams where like, you don't want to go to practice. Like you don't want to go at all. Cause you know, what's coming. And you're like, when, do, how does that make you want to get better at the sport? It's like when you don't want to go do it. And it's like those kids wanted to go do it. And man, they went out there and did her. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it was, uh, like to try and explain all the different games we came back from this year and won it in the last minute. It's like, 
it would be a long podcast if we explained all the games. It's like Shallow Lake, they're a good team and they're a smaller town and they're still good. And um, they gave us everything we could handle one night and we were losing with a minute and a half left. And we didn't just tie. We scored and then scored with 20, 30 seconds left and one again, you know? And it's like, and then all of a sudden these boys all believe it. It's like, this is like as magical of a ride as it gets. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many games if we went back and counted them up, we came back and won. <laughs> it's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So, And it's like, I like I said before the last game to the boys, it's like winning isn't easy. It's like beating this team in the round robin was one thing, but it's like winning a championship's never easy. And it wasn't, man. That team gave us everything we could handle. And uh, they did it again. <laughs> they finished in true Canuck style. That's for sure. They- <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Um well, you guys got anything else before we shut her down? We have to like work tomorrow. Tom, you got anything? Yeah. Tom, you you oh. came in late. You probably got something to talk about, eh? With that nice hair, got the hat on now. <laughs> Can't even see the product. No, I don't want to see that anymore. Uh, I gotta get a haircut. <laughs> no, but like, uh, well, you guys can shut your ears, but I'm very proud of your boys. It's like. Big Daddy Humper, um, the captain, the guy that scores the big goal, pretty sweet, pretty sweet business. And switching him from D to forward, taking him out with O'Reilly at like a year ago when I planned on doing it and started making him do forward drills. Um, it was like, I see something here and I think it will work and that's is best and then to see him go out and do what he did this year was really neat um and then win the all ontario and score the big goal and then little humper um kid's a gamer um he's won international silver stick won all ontario the kid's a winner and um did everything you can ask of a kid and will do anything for his teammates and then jared your little punk um, scores two goals in the finals and um, competed harder than anybody and would go to the hard areas, do whatever it took. And he was always one of the guys being a leader. He was an assistant captain. And it was like to see all this happen. And then Mr. Holt, you little donkey, you wire the shed, you name the shed. And then like, I have a picture on my phone of our kids when they were like, when I first moved here and we go play Shinny and Ripley and they got their arms around each other. And like, I, my kids have, we've grown up together. Like since I moved here, you've been my guy. And then to do it with you and run the forwards with you. And then we win the championship. It's like, how the hell did this all work out from me just moving here out of hockey? And like, now we do this. It's pretty special for me. And, um, neat to see your kids do everything you guys have done because Sheldon was a gamer all weekend was confident cool collected all over the ice and um it, it was incredible to see all this shit happen <laughs> you know <clears throat> no it was quite a ride it was definitely quite a ride and it's been a pleasure boys that was for sure it's mm-hmm. Yep, it's been a pleasure coaching with you boys. Yeah, it's been a great it's, year. It's, it's, she's going to be a tough one to repeat. But... <laughs> yeah, um, that's what's weird about not having the same team twice, right? And especially two age groups together, where like it's going to be totally different next year and for everybody. And uh, yeah, it you you don't get this shit back, right? <clears throat> There's no redos. I think someone once said. And and they did it like they did it for all of us. Like those boys went out there and tried harder than everybody. They gave her harder than everybody. They dug down deeper than everybody and they did it. Like they did it. Like we got to have a parade. We're wearing red hats and it's like, 
they did it. It's crazy. <laughs> but, not, but not that crazy because I thought it was going to happen. You know? Yeah. Um, it's crazy because these, uh, I've had so many people come up to me and say, like, wow, they can't believe, like, for you guys to win in all Ontario, like, they're like, this just doesn't happen every year. Like, it doesn't happen. At, like, so well, it doesn't. Some people never even win WOA. Some people don't even win this. Like to actually win an all Ontario championship is huge. Like that's I can't believe how many people said that to me. Well, and like have everything line up and it actually happened. But like so I think you learn how to win and like what it actually takes. And um I l I learned when I was young and I learned what it meant and what it could bring. I had a fire truck ride in Elmira, Ontario. My old man was the coach and it was memorable stuff. And those are my brothers for life. And um, then I won again with the Elmira Sure Kings with small world Barrett Eggets from Concord in Ontario. And he taught me a lot about winning. He was a gamer. That guy can try harder in hockey than anybody and he will hold teammates accountable. And then I go to Western Michigan after winning a couple times in Elmira and I wasn't strong enough as a leader and as a person to like hold my teammates accountable and maybe didn't have some of the coaching stuff you need, but like we didn't win. And it's like, those relationships are different when you don't win, when you go somewhere for four years with someone and don't win anything, and it's like those, like we're brothers for life because we had so much fun and did everything, but it's like we didn't win. It's like winning is what it's about. And like that's when I realized that like you have to hold your teammates accountable. It's like if they didn't go where they're supposed to go, it's like we'll tell them. It's like you have to go there. And like when I saw our team become a like telling each other to be accountable and like being like you have to be here and you have to go there and like they had it under control that like the coaches didn't even need to coach that much because they are all new it's like if they didn't, didn't dump it in everybody in the bench was like boys we got to get that one deep eh <laughs> you know it was weird weird year great year great one not yeah you don't get this time back and then like thank you guys for making the time i know it's late because um we all got shit to do but like i know we've all been pretty excited this week and we had to get this off our chest didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> but jared thank you again for helping me coach with you this year because i couldn't have asked for a better co-coach or trainer or um front door opener guy and manager guy, you know, because um, it takes every win and like who we have here makes the stuff happen, you know? Yeah. The feelings mutual, buddy. It's been great. It's been really good. You taught me a lot of stuff about hockey and being a teammate. Well, I like those kids can teach you a lot about stuff too. It's like when, some of their work ethic when they got into it man when it when it was time to dig down deep and they were willing to do it for each other it was like holy moly look at these boys go <laughs> uh, i can't Jeez. wait to see where they go because i think there's a lot of potential but i th also think it's like t big daddy humper is like when sam got called up to play contact with the under 15s right before playoffs I went to watch him and support him. Um, he can fit in with any team. It's like that he's big, he's strong, he's a center. It's like, but that's what I think our team has. It's like any of these kids now know how to hockey and they can go play on any team and they can go fit in any dressing room. They can play third line. They can play second line. They can play first line. They, they'll do whatever you want because they know it's about the team. And that is everything I want in a player, you know? Jared, you, you, yeah, good. Oh, I, I agree. Yep. No, I agree. We have a hell of a team. We have it, a hell of a team. 
it uh it is sad it's over um that's what's good about winning is that it never ends and um we can have as many uh reunions as we want because we all live in concord right, <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> but thank you guys for everything and uh i mean i i mean yeah i'm not gonna say too much because i get all choked up again because <laughs> literally i've been sitting at work like just thinking about what happened and like i start like getting wound and i'm like i can't believe that all happened and it happened with these boys that like are from here <laughs> you know cool okay that's it time to get back to the real world we did win though folks and this has been another episode of two ales and hockey tales with big daddy humper holt and my co-coach <laughs> mr adams <laughs>